have one question. I have one question. Yeah, I have a sure, I have a dying skull still on me. Should that still be there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. You're dying. <laughs> I see that on you? Are you dying? <laughs> it's been there for a long time. Uh, I, I would have like a glitch. I don't see it okay. on you on my screen. It's not supposed You're... to be there though. If you want, maybe hit like F5 real quick and just do a quick refresh. Just to be sure. It's like elevator music, but like yeah, different. Yeah, not what not what we're looking for right now. Jam by it. I'm also curious if that refresh takes just as it long does. as that first load. Okay, damn. I'll probably mm. strip out it's the full load. Stuff. Yeah. Well, like, what's the cool? Can you say what the cool stuff is, or? I mean, it's just tons of like different maps and scenes and stuff and lots mm. of extra assets um i really like to be able to like improv a scene and i can do it pretty quickly if i have like some preset locations um that could be used kind of generically or creatively but i, I made a I, I pulled in a lot of them um I think I, I don't know if everyone was on was saying it, but like yeah, I just feel like um, right on the precipice of the the main campaign, the prologue ending, if you will, and really getting yeah. into the shit. So nice. Want to want to have some very sandbox options? Should you all choose to just fucking go who the hell knows where? And there's still there's still plenty of things. There are multiple spines happening in the background, independent of you, whether or not you choose to engage them. And I'm hoping in this campaign, more so than some of the ones we've been playing, which are very much, you know, based on modified and extrapolated modules. But like in this one, we'll see. <laughs> Sounds like that. Yeah. Um, so maybe a little quick recap. We'll get, we're yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. After yeah. utilizing the druid's ability to uh, befriend, manipulate, control uh, the the very hungry grizzly bear, um, you were able to dispatch a number of the uh, tender claw monstrous pirates uh, that had been taking up inhabitants in this lower level of the keep. Um, Utilize that to kind of dispatch uh, a few more of them creeped around you. You spotted a couple frog-like creatures who had made some giant hole in the floor bog-like pond in one of the rooms, which you gladly reclosed and locked back up um, and just found some other overturned rooms, which you didn't really spend a lot of time in before just making your way back out the, the secret entrance uh, and using that time to reflect on all of your experiences and, and get a little bit of rest before you delved deeper into what you were pretty sure at this point was locations within the keep that uh, the, the big the big boss man or now you know captain of the of the Cinderclaw pirates and his henchman Didi were hiding and, and researching of all things. Um, Didi kept mumbling and complaining about wanting to play with his, play with his things some more. You know he kept throwing glances at, at the adjoining room when he was saying that. Um, you also saw one of his lizard men henchmen uh say fuck this shit and flee at pretty low health out the door that you all came in when you when you moved in and engaged with uh with the captain uh and i believe you did hear uh, the occasional sounds of ymir the the named grizzly bear uh roaming about i think you were hopeful yeah. that he might have encountered that lizard person um, but the the outcome of those events is is unclear to you all at this point in time. Uh, so yeah, kind of jumped ahead there. But after your after your rest, you all hit level three with a little bit of a ding and moved in with with the key that you reclaimed from some of the Cinderclaw pirates in the northern rooms to the main center hall. And you found Captain uh, a Knoll, uh, very well spoken, well dressed, uh, dashing Knoll. Um, who flipping through his journals pretty quickly at the end there last time and, and maybe hearing from some of the other crew members uh, is named Captain Golgot Fizzletone. Um, 
it was an interesting battle where his forearm up through his hand seemed to like become pure fire but still maintained its form and he was using it to do some pretty interesting and strange abilities like blasting pillars of fire at you all and absorbing to pitch's dismay uh his sphere of of flame and absorbing it back in and almost recharging himself dd was just a big dumb heavy bugbear uh who looked like this guy's number two uh and was very intent on picking you all up and choking you to death if he could um <laughs> but the fight was close uh dd is is down for the count as far as you're aware and the captain um you basically coup de grad in unison after ignoring his pleas for bargaining and telling you he can help you get off of the you know off of this island and out of this place and join his crew blah 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 smashed his head against the fucking wall um to this moment that we're kind of back to present tenth, where Pitt has kind of like moved forward. Alec is back to just flumping against the wall, pretty much almost as, as exhausted as he was the day before. That that rest helped a bit, sure, but this fight kind of took him back down a few notches. And it's at this moment that you see uh, the captain's small rectangular chest. Think Khaleesi's like little chest where she had the dragon eggs uh, in like Game of Thrones season one. It's like this almost fitted formed box that's tipped over um, from when uh, I think Rhaegar got knocked over or, or leapt over an animal form, the table and charged the captain. Um, a, a fresh uh, ink and quill, like there's ink spilled over the desk. None of it seems to have gotten on uh, the captain's huge log book slash journal. Uh, but that thing, the journal itself, lays open on the table. The chest also lays open, flipped on its side, and three very strange uh, glowing stones uh, are looking out at you all. And uh, we kind of quickly hand-waved through it. Um, but for all intents and purposes, if, if you flip through the captain's journals, a few key pieces of information leapt out at you all. And we can we can delve back in if you have questions or you want to look deeper or closer at his at his uh, log book here. Uh, but the one thing that it talked about was the stones themselves uh, it referred to them as scatter stones and identified um, three different types of stones. One being a primal stone, which he described as incredibly rare. Another, a power stone, which he described as more common. And another, a transformation stone, which was kind of rare. Um, he had notes and annotations there about how he had planned to come to the Isle of Iacron, uh, where he believed an old crew member of his, Orosh, uh, was hiding out. Uh, and the location of three, each one of these unique stone types could be found. And it appears uh, from some deduction, uh, assuming a little time was spent here, um, that in this chest is one of each of those stone types. Um, so we're in this room, his logbook's there. Maybe Pitch was flipping through it and, and calling some of this information out. Uh, the captain is dead. Dee Dee is probably dead. Alex Dagram is really exhausted. Um, and there's a very strong, unnatural, and enticing allure from these stones kind of emanating out to all of you. Um, you noticed that when the captain died with the coup de grace, uh, and you were kind of checking his person a little bit, that there was like a strange obtrusion on, on his on his chest, on his white, puffy, ripped and torn pirate shirt. And it was essentially uh, a, a still kind of glowing, almost like embers cracking in a fire inside a, a gem in his, in his abdomen. Uh, and in the gem, which was quickly becoming clear and translucent, you saw like these embers winking out. And a few moments later, like you could hear like a soft cracking sound, like like ice slowly cracking and growing. Uh, and the, the, the stone in his chest became like brittle glass and just 
began to crack and little pieces fell away. And as they fell away, like the last remaining embers sort of floated out of his abdomen into the air around you, catching everyone's attention. And they kind of winked out. In this moment, there was like a pulse of purplish energy glowing out from each of the stones within the exposed chest. So we're in this room. A lot of crazy shit going on. Alec Fitty. is basically like eyes closed. Just... Yeah. Any, any questions? What are you doing? Let's talk. What were the three types of stones? Primal? Primal? Ethereal? Primal power, power and transformation. 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 Yeah, transformation. Yeah, that's yeah right. I mean, these, these, are, these are the captain's own notes in here. Yep, yep. Um, looking through... So, two things. Looking in the chest to see if the stones glow in any particular way, um, like if different colors or if there's anything that distinguishes them. And then number two, looking to see if there's any way to identify based off of the captain's notes to be able to ascertain what types of stones these are, if, if, if it's primal, transformative, or power. There. So... After the whole little cinematic of, of the captain's chest fizzling out <laughs> and the stone breaking, um, you you all notice and are immediately drawn to the stones pulsing with this purplish energy. And like up until this moment, it was hard to like really gauge form or color on these things. But as you look closer now during this this sort of sharp moment of interest, uh, you see that one of the stones settles into like this greenish color and this almost um like giant diamond type shape another one swirls into more of like an orb or a sphere with swirlish hues of blue uh, and another one has a more amberish color uh and is more like a rough raw rock that like has just been cut fresh from from a, a cave or excavated from a mountain um the notes themselves uh, seem to think that the greenish one is likely a primal stone, the bluish one a power stone, and the amberish one uh, a transformation stone. Should you believe the good captain's <laughs> notes? He seems obsessive about it, though. Like this, yeah. this, this is like coming to this aisle and finding these stones, which, which. You know, connecting the dots seems like he probably got at least the other two somewhere else <laughs> on the island and maybe the third one here. Um, there was, I think, an overheard conversation that implied that the captain was trying to figure out how to join more stones into himself. But it seemed impossible. And there there are notes about how no one seems able to be able to, to join or utilize more than a single stone. And it becomes a very strong bonded uh, relationship. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, I call everybody over. I'm like, hey, uh, there are these stones. And I think that's why, uh, you know, dog face over there uh, was so strong, maybe. Uh, I kind of like uh, you said the blue was the transformative one so he said uh the amber. notes indicate that the blue, blue might be power the power oh yeah. okay the amber one is the Trans. i kind of um i look over now, at Rhaegar. I'll, I'll, th I'll throw this out there I, and sorry to cut you off we'll, we'll come back to that in one second um this log book is big and filled with lots of information. So depending on what you do and how much time you want to spend, there might be more info you can extract out of that. I'm keeping related it. To yeah. Yeah. Uh, the I'll blue one? No, no, the no, log no, no, book? no. The log book. Okay. But I, I, I kind of have it like right now, I'm kind of like in my hand, I'm a like, transformative. Um, you're, um, I mean, you're a druid. You're one with nature. You probably turn into things and stuff. You should have this one. And I kind of, Hold the chest Wait, well, over. Oh, well, like me? yellow. I make I mix potions that uh, I transform ingredients into other ingredients. Does it oh, make sense and, too? And I transform, and you see just a little bit of a claw, <laughs> like come out. I'm like, we all seems sort like of it would be useful for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should rock paper scissors for it. All right, Rochambeau. Older. 
Boulder gotcha. paper shears. Boulder <laughs> parchment shears. Oh, right. It's different in this region. <laughs> I don't really want the whatever this transformative one is. Uh, if you guys want to roll off for it. I don't even know which one I want. Are you interacting with the stones or just, or just talking to each other? Like, <laughs> like are you picking them out and like examining it. them? Oh, I'm, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to pick up like the... I'm going to pick up maybe the... The I don't box know, the is still one. on the ground now, like let's say on the floor near you guys. Like, Are you, are you putting it up on the table or are you just looking at them? Or are you taking the stones out? I need, I need some details. I'm going to pick up the green <laughs> one and just see if I can't see anything like looking up at it, like holding it up to the light. Even like examining it, like in reference to the books and you're, stuff. You're touching it with your bare skin. Yeah. Okay. okay. Does it? Does uh, he explode? <laughs> they explode. You, uh, you feeling uh, anything? You uh, like the chest is down on the ground. Like you reach over and and kind of pull, and it it does require a little bit of a pull. Um, but you you remove the hmm. green stone, and as like you. You kind of like get ready to turn it over and look at it. You you feel like some kind of otherworldly energy, like, and the thing like just starts to float up in front of your head, and you all oh, uh -oh. collectively see uh, like a greenish glow and energy around the stone as it floats in front of Hitch's face, and like a, a, a wispy tendril reaches down as if connected or or related to the other stones and you just hear like this <sighs> and both of them begin to glow with their own respective colors and all three of the stones are <sighs> swirling around uh, a small radius of the room at sort of face height and they're swirling and circling all of you you uh... feel like if you <laughs> what'd you do pitch what did you I, do i just touched it i you can't put things in front of oh, me no. and... do i do i recognize this feeling is this something i would have I, uh, like you said other otherworldly is this something yeah, yeah, yeah. Familiar? uh you can make uh mm. oh my gosh <laughs> i would make like it kind of check a, i feel like it'd be an awkward an occultism check for you. Yeah. Actually, sorry, you can oh, make wow. a boneyard lore if you're if you're kind of leaning into Ooh, that. Oh, I see that. Yeah, okay. That's okay. under your uh, lore skills. Uh, anyone else could try to make a a relatable. Well, can I Arcana recall? just uh, see what kind of magic Arcana. it is? Yeah, Arcana. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! <gasps> Somebody's gonna know some shit, dude. Oh, Arcana. All right. Yeah, I can do oh, that. Fuck. Oh fuck. I see your nat twenty. Um, I do not match roll my back. 17. <laughs> All right. Well, I, th I think it's more interesting for me not to talk to Klug in secret, and you guys can be big boys and you know keep oh. your characters in yeah. character. Uh, narratively, <laughs> would be more interesting. So, um, Daryl, you hear things in the kitchen working for Oroch. Oh. And at one point, <laughs> I thought you meant. <laughs> oh, oh my! Someone's in my I'll house. Right I can't hear. Daryl, Daryl, not here. Um. <laughs> You you've heard conversations with Orosh, and there was a there was a time, maybe a month or two back, when a really interesting, weathered, gnarled looking dude came through. And it's all starting to click for you right now, man. Like the mention the mention that Galgat used to be a member of Orosh's crew. Um you you're kind of like you you just you're just fucking mental mapping connecting the dots. You heard this conversation some time back when you were working the kitchen bringing some food out and you knew you shouldn't have listened but something about it felt important. And in that moment you heard you heard Orosh having this conversation with the guy about the stones, about scatter stones being on this island. <sighs> Yeah, and and he mentioned like the, and I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase a lot, kind of give you some bullet points from this from this memory, but the man said something to Orosh, and he said something along the lines of like, "You left this crew, your old crew for a reason, and you agreed to watch over the stones, your logbooks, 
your special compass. You kept it buried where the old ships lay. Yes. And like, again, you're kind of connecting the dots. Like that's the compass you guys use to like get drawn yep. some energy in the keep here. That's what it is. You know, Orosh had a few comments back. You know, he made, he made comments about like how, how Gull got, had lost his mind and become obsessed with finding the stones and that Orosh basically said, you know, something like, it's like, Oh, I can never let him know that the stones are here. For that matter, Renrath. And Renrath, you, you kind of remember, is the captain of the rovers. And you kind yeah. of, you're kind of connecting the dots some more, and you're realizing that these three, on some level, used to be members of the same pirate crew. And, uh, you know, they, they were, the only other thing that kind of comes back about the stones during that conversation was that the stones, like, the, and this was like them kind of sharing like almost like old drunken pirate tales. Because uh, you kept listening to that guy throughout the night. Um, and he was like, you know, he was he was having a conversation with one of his traveling companions, who I guess was in on the know a little bit. He wasn't a part of the Orosh conversation. That was a one-on-one -on -one private thing. But this old, this old sailor, this old pirate was saying, you know, like, I, the remnants, shards of stone had rained down from the cosmos when this world fall. Smashing all the land into the dragon sea that we know now. The stones are of the sky. The sea is of this earth, and they do not mix. The Don't seas of the what? Okay. Power. Earth. So the, yeah, yeah so the stones are of the sky and the sea. Sea is of this earth, and they they do not mix. The stones don't mix with the sea. He was talking, and he kind of he was kind of. But the stone, they hold some of that otherworldly cosmic power. And I've seen them out there now. The dangerous part of the scattered sea. Up top, new captains, leading their crews with. With the data stone powers at their hands, and even the seekers who wish to bring law and order to our wild sea, even they have been taken to the stone, trying to control them, offering some of these captains strange deals, mutually beneficial relationship. And we're in this age now. An arms race, if you will, of these scatter stones. And the conversation's like carried on at that point. There's really nothing more tangible you can recall from that. Yeah. Boy, did that memory hit you like a nat 20. I <laughs> thought he was crazy. <laughs> he was right. Yeah, I, I relay all that sh uh, memory right? to the, everybody else. Oh. There's this old codger who's spitting tales about stones right in from the sky, and I think these are them. The there's something them. almost... <laughs> They're like spinning around us as you're telling us, like lights yeah. reflecting. Yeah, exactly. And there's something almost magical about it. Like while, while Daryl's describing all of this, the stones do continue to dance and swirl around you all. And it's this mesmerizing thing that like Daryl's story is just enthralling. You're, you're all hanging on every fucking word. And by the time you get to the end of it, you realize just for a split second, all of you with your fairly high rolls yourself, <laughs> that like his words are getting slower and slower as the conversation goes on. And before you look around, like the the room is like like just pulling focus it's like blurring out around you and you only see each other and the stones sorry <laughs> and you're no longer in the ancient keep as far as you can tell what you're you're in some strange dreamlike place Okay, hold please. Oh no, they've kidnapped us. Oh. Mm. 
perfect. That's yeah, exactly that's awesome. what it's like. <gasps> uh, Mittens is not here. You're all standing here, and as you kind Whoa. of like the blurriness begins to fade, you see that you're on like some kind of floating celestial stone encrusted with gems, potentially other scatter stones. It's hard to say. Maybe this is their raw form. And you can see like strange portals in a gateway that almost looks like a way out of here. Shit. But best you could tell, you have no fucking way to get there. You also see glowing oh, like God. this strange purple glow that the stones first took on before their final colors formed. You see respective colors in portals and platforms floating off in the distance. This isn't really to scale. Like imagine these stones are floating and shifting all around you, but always kind of maintaining orbit around this sort of center portal. Um, <sighs> and the scatter stones um... that seem to have brought you here into this cosmic dreamlike place or state of mind, you're not quite sure, are still kind of floating around the three of you. Um, what do you do? What are you doing? Um, wait, so, wait, sorry, the, the three that we had are still floating around us, but now yeah. we're in this new location? Okay. Yeah, you know, um, are you familiar with, like, in d d they had, like, ion stones? Ion, mm -hmm. I don't know how you say them. Yeah, um, it, it's somewhere between that idea and, like, a Jedi just kind of, like, yeah. meditating with rocks floating around them. these things are like just constantly in orbit around all of you within like 10 feet of of the group swirling between you all with with colored tendrils of energy that seem to trail between them i so, uh oh, okay sorry uh green is which primal primal okay yeah amber is transformation blue is power okay mm -hmm. according um, to the logbook and, and so these th uh, three that are spinning around us, are there any more like in this space or just no, large there, portals? And there's okay. just there's just like, yeah, there's large, okay. almost asteroid like platforms with like gems encrusted into them and, and growing out of them. Um, and like even even though like on this map visually, like this platform to the northwest of you seems kind of close. It's not. It's like <laughs> fucking really far away. Like you feel like you'd be stepping off into the abyss or into the into the you know time space for all you can tell if you walked <laughs> off this platform right now i'm gonna jump in the air dude i was a belt and jump yeah <laughs> and i'm gonna see it, what gravity is like here if there's you're gonna yeah. you're gonna try to jump off the platform no, oh well, god no no i was just gonna jump in place and then i was gonna, uh, go, okay. gonna jump off the platform <laughs> If you like start going for the edge, I'm like, I'm gonna stop you. I'm like, oh, so, you'll be lost to time and space. Don't do it. Uh, you, 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 you anticipate. You lean down and then you, you, you just give it everything you got and, and you jump up and you're almost expecting something strange to happen, but it doesn't. Huh. All right. I'm gonna. I want to walk slowly okay. to the edge and I want to look down and just see uh. what I see. I okay. put my hand on his how, belt how <laughs> as he's doing that. Like, like, I mean, Pitch doesn't give a fuck. He's walking real close to the yeah, end. Yeah, no, I, I am being a mom right now. I'm like, just don't, don't get okay. too close. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like a child who's just genuinely curious about. Like, he's looking all around and like, what even is this place? And like, what looking are you looking down. at? Okay. And uh, you should be able to move. Go ahead and move to don't, don't don't oh, let him go over the edge. Let me try it. Try now. Yeah, I'm going to move like over here. I want to look like down okay. and see what I see. So, and, and like the stones are trailing between you all right now. Um, still trying to stay equidistant between the collective group. Um, and pitch as you approach um, and get close to the edge. I mean, it's like this beautiful swirl of colors, mostly covered in darkness with blips of light off in the distance with the depth beyond your eyes can can perceive. But as you get to the edge and take all of this in, you know, you're, you're walking forward and you can almost feel as you get near the perimeter of the walkable surface. It's like if someone had a wind machine and like you could push against it with some 
you know, to some extent, but the further and closer you get to being able to like walk off the edge, it like almost forces you back like some invisible, almost malleable barrier that can't be seen seems to be keeping you here. Oh, so you can't go off the edge. <gasps> Where's Mittens? Oh, Mittens! God. Mittens is not here, as far as you can tell. Oh, no! Is this real? Is this real? I, Wait, is this real? Like, like, so I'm going to put my hands out, and do I feel like them being, like, repelled back? Like, you know, when you have two magnets that you're yeah. pushing the wrong ends together? No, it's more like pushing in, like, uh like a waterbed or a mattress like it put it has some give to it but then eventually like the elasticity it can only push so far and it just starts to push back all right uh daryl hold on tight and i i wind back and i run and i jump (laughs) Uh, okay uh make an athletic check for me i don't i'm gonna try to hold on I don't know what that means. <laughs> Which direction are you going? Did you say, uh, <laughs> no. you're facing the nothing. There's these rocks. Around you're right. you're facing well, the nothing. You said, you said that, like the, every other thing is like far enough away. Where yeah, you like jump they're in. and they're all yeah they are and they are kind of like whirling and moving you know in, in three dimensional space. Um, Hitch, like you give it everything you got and just go like leaping in like you know, this really strong action pose and you kind of like, like someone who's got like an invisible elastic, uh, you know, chain anchoring them down to the ground. Like you just see him kind of like go and stay in that pose and just freeze and keep going. And it just slows to a stop. And then you slingshot back across the ground. Cool. Rhaegar, you've been watching this. I don't know if you're like moving the fuck out of the way well in advance of this, or if you need to make a reflex save. Uh, I mean, I would make a reflex save, but almost anticipating after watching what he was doing. You know, yeah, like, I, yeah. Daryl, you were ho- trying to hold on or prepare to, like, grab him? Yeah. Or, like, help throw him? What, were you, what was your athletics? No, save? no, no. I was trying to keep him from going over the edge. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> My athletics save, though, would you say that I would have an advantage? Like, I was watching him the whole time. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. You would you uh, in my mind you, you you've got a very low DC on your DC, reflex okay. save if you want to roll that for me now like I'm just looking for a ten or higher. Well, um, you know, Daryl challenge me. Oh my god, yeah. I, I, I grabbed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, you, you between between Daryl trying to like hold on to some piece of him and you watching this whole thing like you guys just collectively come together. And through strength and dexterity, uh, you keep Pitch from, like, just fucking rolling end over end and smashing his face on those up upgrowing crystals at the back of the rock Do, here. Um, now, I, uh, earlier when we were in this area, I'm curious if there's anything Boneyard-wise. I know we went through all that information as far as the stones and stuff, but yeah. is this area familiar in any Not way? Not at all. Okay. Not at all, I'm afraid, yeah. Um, during all of this... Hovering, <laughs> hovering like, like heathered friends, uh, the the scatter stones just like react and swirl around you, and then settle down to like a slower orbit again. Are they within reach? Oh yeah, like, like they followed us. Yeah, I mean, like they're at, at, they're in reach at times. Like you could just like watch and wait them. And wait for wait for like their trajectory and okay. orbit to be within reach, and but it, it will happen within a minute, at okay. most. I like. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm like, you guys caught me, and I'm just like, mm. oh, that pretty cool. <laughs> uh, um, um, you think? Um, maybe not a good idea. The stones, like the colors, are matching those platforms out there, so maybe. If we can grab a stone, possess Ooh. the stone, we can traverse this space. Okay. Is there, I don't, I don't know what you guys. Like, I don't know if once we pick it up, if something's going to happen, or if we're going uh... to bond with these things or something. But if there's a stone that you would like to, they, I don't they know. bestow immense power. 
and uh, all the pirates had them. And I feel like they would be safer in our hands than if we uh, just let them be. But you're you're suggesting that we use the stones, though, right? Because that's yes. exactly what I'm saying. I'm suggesting that. All right. So um, is there a color? Do you guys care? Primal transformation power. I vote transformation. I, I know what I would like, but it's to my nature, I think. I don't. None of these mean anything to me. I'll take whatever. Are you sure? I think so. All right. Um, I'll, I'll take uh, primal. You're I, about, all about animals. Out of character, I will throw this out there. Um, when you were flipping through the logbook, there were more detailed entries for like sections for each stone that had some hints oh. and ideas <laughs> about what oh look what i found about. at least at least we'll get <laughs> oh there's more information yeah right. that makes sense we should read that um, read the manual we should, we should probably read a little bit rtfm of here yeah um I, I i read through uh since daryl felt strongly about the transformative one i start reading through a little bit that of that could be section. way wrong um okay like, uh, is flip, there flip over to the transformative yeah, part of the like, logbook? Quick bullet points. If there's any, does it seem like it's the transformative of like, so, like polymorph sort of thing? Gal 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 has notes about a pirate captain he's seen. Um, they call him the Sea Dragon. Oh. Um, Gal Gat believes that he, the captain, the Sea Dragon character. Um, was joined with a transformation stone. He's heard a, a few other tales, but not seen anything firsthand, he notes, about other people that he believed had transformation stones. <sighs> and they were all kind of wildly different. You've got the sea dragon, who allegedly could transform into a large fucking sea dragon and utilize its powers with the mind of his own. He's also heard tell of something more beast like something more animalistic, like a captain who, like an elf, uh, who could transform into a, a giant eagle uh, or something like something like that, some kind of bird. Um, and, you know, on and on, like the notes go all to infer that like transformation stones while less common than power stones and not as rare as primal stones. Dolgat thinks that they are one of the most expansive in terms of like, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, but all of his notes indicate that if you could think of a, a tree structure, if you will, under the transformation stone, uh, he thinks you could take the form of any manner of any any creature that you've seen do, um, do you guys do you know what's most interesting all number of oh. categories this entry oh. about this captain being a sea serpent and yet these stones isn't there a thing here and i kind of flip through the pages about not yeah, being able man float. yeah not being able to be very akin to uh. water it's quite interesting i wonder what that yeah. means Galgat's own experiments in regards to seawater are that uh, his stone's power, his cinder claw, once exposed to seawater, seem to not function so well, or at all, really. He also noticed that while not debilitating, um, when he was in the ocean for a very extended period of time, he was so weakened that he was just doing a dead man's float. He could barely paddle himself out of there and had his, mm. his, his crewman had to fish him out. Did he, um, did he comment about um, mm. what stone he, is there anything, any entry in there about which stone he, he believes? Was... Yeah. He believed he had a power stone okay. um, that was I mean, focused on mm. controlling fire. He was no slouch, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and 
while you're flipping through. I mean, he's also describing power stones as kind of like a strange mastery of anything you could imagine, but like a very focused mastery. Um, there was... Hold on. Um, there was one guy uh, who he had the pleasure of killing, he said, <laughs> who he described his power as a toy maker. Like, he believed that his stone allowed him to turn people into, like, almost animatronic-like toy versions of things that he could control, almost like henchmen or, like, curses. Um, so, I mean, you're talking about, like, the ability to control manipulate flames to, like, insane shit that, like, is unheard of. So, essentially, power stones, to Golgant's reasoning, are the all-encompassing, very strange and focused abilities. Hmm. Which leaves only primal stones. Yeah, I flipped to the primal stone section. Hmm. I'm telling everybody, as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm kind of narrating out loud as I read. I feel like Rhaegar should have the transformation. The primal stone entries um, talk about like the raw essence of nature on both earth and in in the in the stars um he only ever heard of one person uh and he describes this as uh a a captain of the seekers um and this person was the physical embodiment of of air like his entire form just became air and he could do things related to air and in like Golgoth got like little footnotes in here about like you know wondering if an elemental stone is a, is a more better name but there's like other allusions to to things um like the sun and the moon itself like not just the raw elements but mm. the primal forces of, of the universe um and he believes that this stone is like a, a full-on conversion of the user. Like they still maintain their normal form, but they can kind of shift and become like the embodiment of this element or this primal force. Well, that's cool. Is there mention of but any quite kind rare? Of... Okay. <sighs> I mean, what's the opposite of wind? Is it like earth? Is earth like seem super strong against? I don't know. If you're a physical embodiment of air. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's like weaknesses that are a part of that. Um, there's a lot I can't say. Well, um, <laughs> gentlemen, I'm not sure what you would like to do here. Um, they all seem quite interesting from what I've read. Did I hear something about a sea dragon? I believe that was the transformation stone. Hmm. Is, that sounds like it would be perfect for... I, I feel like it would be absolutely perfect for you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's settled. Um, I don't have to touch I... You probably have to touch the stone and then, <laughs> you know, do something with it. It's I not a suppository, know. is it? I oh. don't know what is required. But what would you do for power is the real question. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're telling me I have to, I guess I... Well... Hey, hey Morty. Uh, stick these, <laughs> just stick these right up your, you know... You gotta put it up your butt, Morty. <laughs> Hurry. That was the problem, oh, Morty. Gift, by the way. I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose that leaves the two other stones. Uh... Daryl. Um, uh, you're the magical one. I think you should take whatever makes sense to you. Um. I mean, Primal seems interesting for the sole fact that most of what I do is it's not really studied. Well, more like I study it. More like magic falls upon me, but I don't know if that's exactly what the primal, that primal stone is. Um, 
I'm okay well, with who? either. But, well, quick synopsis of um again, one you control stuff, and then the other one you have yeah, more power. Well, it's it's control stuff is a bad description. Um, <laughs> power is kind of like I would think of it like this: transformation seems very connected to allowing the user to control a specific type of of form, creature, animal, beast, monster. Like there, right. there's there's a lot of speculation in there, uh, but all and it, it, like in the gall get theorizes that there's like hundreds of thousands of potential forms and that the stone itself it's just going to depend on how you attune with it um and be largely out of your control as are any of these stones um the primal stone is more described like a raw element and like a tr a transformation of you becoming like the embodiment of some primal force or element um like all encompassing like he describes this guy as as like like an an air humanoid but you know like he's, he's people only saw him take that form like once or twice in like a ship to ship <laughs> battle um every other I time he like still seems to be pitch. normal um and then the the power like it's just a wide ranging description it's kind of like a catch all of like a very <laughs> specific focused um type of power um and some of them like uh, so you become like the a cinder claw specialist seems, seems... sort of thing and a... yeah yeah hmm. and mm, okay out of you take primal of... i'll take power are you sure yeah it sounds you could turn into a ghost well i'm fine with that i think that's pretty interesting actually that's good because i don't want to turn into a ghost <laughs> that's that's your whole basis of reason for the rest of the campaign. That's your basis of reasoning. Is, oh, well, the, do you think the other oh, ghost here? <laughs> Are you superstitious? I don't like ghosts. <laughs> Pitch actually stops and looks at you and is like, "Are you uh, superstitious at all? Just out of curiosity." Um, a bit, maybe <laughs> a little uh, bit. <laughs> He had he had he had the the experience of listening to like first hand fucking sailor pirate <laughs> well, tales now, about like yeah. the mystery of the stones. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wait until the primal stone is within range, and then I'm going to use mage hand to pull it towards me. Okay, I'm going to wait till pitch does whatever he does to the stone before I do anything to the one I'm going to get. I also immediately dropped my pant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I want to watch it. Maybe help this mage hand. Open work. up. <laughs> Open wide. Um. <laughs> so you send the mage hand out to like wait and grab it and pull it back to you. Yep. Okay. Um. You both watch as as pitch does this. Like the hand, it's conjured, it formed, it, it begins to float out in perfect timing to grab. The primal stone, you said? Yeah. And it reaches around it, and you lose control of the hand. Like, the, the stone begins to glow uh, with, with, the, with the same color, hue, and energy, and, like, a tendril forms, and your hand just, like, floats back towards you with, like, the stone almost encrusted in the ethereal mage hand, and it floats back to, like, right in front of your face, and just sit there and the tendril like the color tendril swirl around your neck I, yeah i reach my hand out and like i assume it's like just wrapping all around i'm just oh, like yeah. taking it and like does it float or am i physically holding it or does it is it, it like it floats if, if you reach out to grab it it almost feels like a magnetic attraction towards you and like the the green stone like almost wants to be taken i grab it like that just right. very loosely and kind of holding it in front of my face in a very like well that's interesting and while while you're examining it like the green energy is like swirling all around you at this point to like any onlookers like you are coated with like 
a swirling, shimmering, almost uh, like glowing version of yourself, slightly slightly larger than yourself, just wrapped around you, but like you know, swirled and, and patchwork with with like tendril shapes. Um, you notice um, as you look out that a I do little things. Oh yeah, a green pathway bridge seems to be tethered between the platform Ooh. and the green uh glowing altar in it was basically like the runes aren't carved into the surface of the stone uh Ooh. and like even as the stones orbit and shift it's like a pathway that always stays perfectly locked together um yeah i uh does everybody else see it or am i the only one that sees this pathway uh, you're I, the only I, one that sees that pathway. I immediately Ooh. move over. Oh, it says I'm colliding with the wall. Um, I move over to where that is, and I step out. Like like Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, when he gets to the pit, I just have that moment where I'm holding the stone, and I'm looking down. I'm holding the stone, and I just put my foot out and step. I'm just gonna draw a uh, loose <laughs> pathway. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and oh like, my god! Uh, it, it, it's just like shimmering in front of you, and like you guys are watching Pitch just like slowly Pitch! walk on some arcing path through uh. space towards the floating green <clears throat> rune encrusted rock off in the distance. And it's it's quite. I mean, it's like it's a slow. I'd say two minute walk before like you finally get closer to the destination are you guys just watching or are you doing anything else like because this is taking I was a little to, bit like, time I'm, i felt like i was like trying to see if there's if i could feel a walkway that he's walking on or if he's, he's just walking on water I no, can't you, you, what he's doing. and you experience like that same kind of resistance uh right. that pitch initially felt when trying to press out and walk close to the border of this thing Uh, Pitch, you feel like a warm comfort the closer you get to this rock. Oh, yeah. I keep going. I'm, I'm going to go until I get there unless people are... Oh, okay, well, let's, 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 let's throw the focus <laughs> back over to the uh, entry stone. Did, where you, did you are, see are, that? Are you just watching? And, like, eventually, I'd say by the time Pitch gets to where uh, he's almost there, like... You can no longer see him. It's just like a swirl of green energy around him. Well, no, what? He didn't even say how he. What he? How did you do that? Pitch! Grab the stone. Grab oh. my stones, and I grab my balls. And I just shift him up at him. <laughs> I turn around. And do the oh. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what uh, I'm means... grabbing my stones is gonna do. I think it's that one, and I point to the yellow, the amber one, oh. for you, Regar. Uh, you're supposed to grab it, and I'm gonna grab uh, the blue one. I grab it. <laughs> okay. Um, Real hard. You're you're both. Able... <laughs> you just like smack it like a fly. <laughs> You're both able to reach out and uh, take hold of a stone after waiting for its orbit to get close enough. Um, and you each respectively experience something quite similar. Uh, the the aura and the, the hue of it is different, matching the stone that you grab. Um, but after like a strange and thralling experience, you too feel like this sense of warm comfort. And as you look up, you each see uh, pathways open up off of the platform you stand on towards one of the floating asteroids. And I wish I could color code these, but I can't. Mm. You get it. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm going to, uh, I guess, walk to my island. Uh. <laughs> You walk on your island, I walk on my island. I can't walk on an island. There's a no, crystal uh, in my way. Oh. 
Yeah, there's a barrier. <laughs> it it, it arcs over there. It's not a real okay. barrier. But I can't move it. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah. Oh, you good. can't. Oh, 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 sorry. I gotta put you on the path first. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, Walk slow. Same thing. Careful. Yeah. I'm yeah. get over to the other side. On board. Yep. Dismounting. Uh, Remounting. Uh, 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 <laughs> the last couple of steps, I'm like, <laughs> run onto it. <laughs> uh, uh. Can I see uh, Rhaegar from here? Uh, every now and then, you can catch a glimpse of someone's asteroid, we'll just call them, uh, off in the distance. And, like, the the sort of wrapping shroud of, of aura of colored aura around them is still there, but it's almost like a huge cylinder of similar light is kind of echoing out or, or beaming out from the ground runes as, as you stepped onto your platform as the stone of that color in your hands uh, seems to activate it kind of creating this intense energy field. Um, collectively, uh, give me one second. <laughs> I yell out to Rhaegar. Are you okay? <laughs> can I hear? Like, how far can we? Is it feel? Yeah. I'd say at this point you can't hear each other. Like, you can see like the you can see the this. glowing color energy. You, you saw each other kind of moving towards them. <laughs> um, but that was that was your last moment of communication. Oh no. Uh, it's not real. Uh, it's not real. <laughs> I do believe I've, in fairy. I've had worse trips than this. This isn't real. <laughs> Hold, please. Daryl's over there with like, <laughs> like looking down at his belt, <laughs> like <laughs> I don't want mm. to. <laughs> please yeah. please don't make do? me. <laughs> you oh, act man. like there's ghosts or something over there. It's like in Ratatouille when he's trying to figure out if you yeah. should put Remy down his pants he's or like, not. <laughs> he's like, and Remy's like, oh god, please, please don't do this. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's man. let's take two to five right now so i can use the washroom and prep a couple things yeah hell yeah dude this is wild where's me i could use mittens right now <laughs> i really need mittens <laughs>
Jabroni arrive yet? No, it's not coming till like ten. Eleven. They're saying eleven on PM now. Mm. Oh jeez. It's probably gonna be one of those things where it's like, eventually Grubhub is like, oh, your driver just decided to peace out with your meal, <laughs> and then they'll give me a refund. Uh, it's happened a couple times with Grubhub. It's pretty crazy. That's sad. I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, I know. I was really looking forward to that brownie. <laughs> <laughs> delicious brownies. Oh, what oh. delicious brownie. Dude, I'm thinking about changing uh, uh, Daryl to be more of a churgeon than a, a mutil. Ch- mutil- What's or? a churgeon? Chur- chur- basically churur- chururgeon. It's more of a um, <coughs> healer, dedicated healer, than a... Uh, uh, kind of like the thing that I'm doing now, which is kind of like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. But the Mr. Hyde thing doesn't, like, it's never useful. Or there's no, never a situation in which it actually wins. Because, like, it's it's always better for me to use my battle axe. And if I do do, like, the fangs and claw attack or something, the plus is less, and it lowers my AC. So it's like, I don't wow. know what the benefit is to it. Yeah, that feels I bad. I I sort of, so, I yeah. honestly I sort of feel the same way with like when pitch is like I'm gonna use my claws. It's like yeah, but you're a a spellcaster. You really want to <laughs> get in melee range <laughs> with anything? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But does that change your ability to like um you like quick brew potions and stuff? And that's been helpful um yeah see the the quick brewing of like bombs and yeah. healing potions has been the best so i think like but and that's that not the mutagenist you... oh i see it's that's more of like either a, yeah exactly it's either like a bomber or um a church and i think would be better for that role interesting i was trying to go like like a paladin in a way beefy off heels if it helps Hmm. I have I mean, I have several dedicated heals. Um Yeah. Yeah. I mean paladin's I not the right word cuz I, yeah. I I'm in more of the druid world but I have but I want to yeah, be beefy. But... Yeah. I'm going all innate anything. So even like the quick heal now that I get whenever we rest, it's like it's like someone who's just re- like street smarts over book smarts sort of thing it's like you're i don't know just naturally figure things out as opposed to like study and all that nonsense yeah fuck that nonsense yeah who needs that that's funny because it's so different than my own personality (laughs) yeah um the reason i'm saying that is because like I, I was going unarmed with a couple things too, like we were saying to the bites and the claws and stuff, and they all suck. The good thing with unarmed attacks is that the second attack is not as bad, and at least in my particular instance, I went with Titan Wrestler just so that getting up close. I mean, I guess you could do it with the man. I don't know. For my theme, it felt cool. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. <laughs> you know? See, it just switched over to like. Your order has been delivered. No. It's like, it has not. It definitely has not. You Wait, did it switch over? Yeah. No. Like, for a second, it was like, oh, someone, ha- like, there's a delivery guy. And then, like, two minutes later, it was like, your order has been delivered. I'm like, mm, no. Dude, does that happen often? I don't even know. I bet it- not I often, but it does happen with Grubhub every once in a while. And all I have to do is just, like, you know, call Grubhub right. and say like, "Hey, they didn't deliver it," and they'll just refund the order. It's not a big deal, but like, still, it's annoying. It's man, I wanted it's that. Like it's yeah. hard for them to track expectations. Yeah, Come on. I, I, yeah. The only saving grace is that Grubhub never questions it. They're always like, "Just I'll just refund, refund the whole thing. It's fine." That's cool. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just remember that I hadn't eaten any fucking dinner. I had to make a little something to snack on in a bit here. 
I respect that. Yeah. So, just one second and we'll get back into it. Uh, Daryl grabbed the power stone, right? Mm -hmm. I did. Pitch primal. Okay. Thanks. Just one more minute. All right. Everybody good? Yep. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, since you drew first blood, pitch. Mm. Mm -hmm. the all of like you know i wouldn't say it's necessarily like a, a symbol like this but there's like a strange pattern connected by numerous runes forming interesting swirling shapes as they all begin to glow and illuminate with a a, a pulsing green color and like the light shoots and emanates so strongly upward that there almost appears to be like a broken up cylinder of light just enshrouding you as you float through space on this stone. And for a moment, you feel above it all, literally, like you're hovering above the known universe, looking down upon it from the galaxies as if you were some kind of god. What once might have been a maze with the predetermined path becomes a simple series of shapes with every conceivable cheat, work through, or shortcut at the tip of your fingers. But this sudden burst of omniscience is almost too much for you, as if the secrets of the universe that you just glimpsed were slipping back out of your mind. And you feel in this moment that you might be able to grasp and hold on to one of those things and take it back with you. And it, you're reaching, you're grasping, and, and you're thinking these thoughts when you suddenly find yourself standing someplace else. Oh, shit. Um, one second. <laughs> I'm going to... I totally million. read the wrong description. Imagine that was uh, Daryl I was talking to out of order. <laughs> Daryl, I don't know if you caught any of that. Oh, sorry. It was. I'm texting Grubhub right now. Sorry. sorry. What's going on? We're gonna we're gonna rewind time and redo. This is why you don't leave in the middle of a thing when you mix your notes up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Primal stone. Primal stone. Pitch is the primal stone. Mm. Um, <laughs> so all of the stuff with the light, that still happens. Mm -hmm. And you begin to kind of float <clears throat> a little bit off the surface in this column of light. I'm amazed by it. The very essence of the universe appears to be before you as you look down around this strange place you find yourself. But you can feel it now. You're a direct embodiment of one of the primal forces that make up this known universe. And as you contemplate this realization, you see what can only be described as an intergalactic time lapse of these cosmic forces interplaying with each other. Eventually, this dizzying experience ends, and you look down to see your form shifting and materializing just as these things in the time lapse did like acid mm. eating through stone stone wearing down and becoming sand a piece of driftwood laying in that sand baked to absolute dryness until a, a, a little flame forms coming hot fire 
ash smoke form from that and so on and so on and fucking so on. And you almost feel like you could try to think hard about one of these primal forces. But your thoughts slip away. And in this moment, you, you find yourself someplace else altogether. Mm. Um, I've never done this before. I'm going to try pulling just you to a different scene. Okay. Let me know if it loads for you. Yes. Yeah, it did. I'm going to also pull the watcher for this recording here. Oh, cool. There we go. Yeah. And yeah. You see this Whoa. almost embodiment of a timeless elemental creature uh, like growing out of the fallen logs in the ground before you numerous fireflies kind of move to form the animated orbs of the eyes but you see some ancient treant like creature larger than life itself in front of you and like a ah. grumbling rustling of leaves jiggles the beard like shape across its trunk here does it appear to be moving at all more like the wind appears to be blowing and rustling okay. the leaves that are, are kind of personifying some of its features and the fireflies that dance and flit about almost seem to animate like the the mm. sockets of the eyes um what do you do hello i, I, I call of... out just pull everyone over. I don't know if you guys... Oh, you guys won't be able to see. Uh, well, just be for, for pitching the recording if you ever want to check it out. Um, you call out and say, Hello! Yeah. And yeah. about a moment later, like, the the beard rustles a little more aggressively. And you just hear, like, this, this elderly, calm voice. Step forward. I step forward. I move forward, like until the the fireflies are like all around me. And I just kind of hold my hands out, like almost trying to touch them, see if they like gravitate towards me or something. They do, yeah. They they dance around you, um, in the voice, uh, almost as if a little somber, kind of says, uh. Sometimes the fates can be unkind. You're becoming one of us now. And perhaps I can give you a bit of rock. Mm. It's a silly old game we play, but can you answer me a riddle so I might gauge your cleverness? Sure. No food I cook will ever fill me, and yet one simple drink will surely kill me. What am I? No, sorry, what was it? No food I cook will ever... Fill me? Will ever fill me. No food I cook will ever fill me, and say the rest of it. Yet one simple drink will kill me. Why don't you linger on that for a moment? We'll come back to you. No food I cook will ever fill me. And actually, yeah, no, let's stay on you. Fuck that. I trust <laughs> you. Also, let's let's keep it high pressure. Hold on, you said no could no food I cook will ever fill me and what was the rest of it? Yet one simple and drink will kill me. Simple drink will kill me. Fireflies continue to dance around you, and the wind rustles the beard and brow of the large tree. Thing. Oh man, dude, riddles at <laughs> eleven at night. <laughs> uh, 
riddles in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Well, riddles in the dark. I would, I would take time and actually think about this. All right, I'll tell you what. No, no searching things. I'm not we'll, searching things. We'll, we'll come back to you. Um, is this like a? Wow, well, I'm real, inter- I'm real curious about whether I get this right or wrong. <laughs> what, what it means? Yes. I'll let you know after the fact. Um, so, uh, just so I don't have to remember me reading the wrong thing, we'll go to Rhaegar next and then come back to Daryl. Just a bunch of done. A little time in the sandwich there. Um, let me pull. Firefly sandwich. You lucky son of a bitch. Oh, so. Similar experience for you, Rhaegar. Uh, yellow runes and patterns form this like cylindrical uh, uh, just energy field around you. And before you know it, the yellow stone still like kind of floating out of your grip in front of your face now. Uh, you're kind of looking almost forcefully inside of it. Uh, and this stone enthralling you contains, you can see, it, it contains essentially the source code for every manner of creature or thing ever conceived by this universe. In this moment, you know this, and you can feel the pulse, the beat, the tick of every potential one of these forms vying for your tether, fighting to become one with your vessel. In one moment, you're pulled down to the earth, almost like trend, just diving into the stone as if it like contained a million tiny microscopic universes inside of it. And in a moment, you're pulled down to, to the earth galloping across it across its surface in some form another moment kind of passes and suddenly you're swimming through the depth of the scattered sea as if it were your natural habitat and just as you begin to surface for air so too do all the other forms now inside of you clawing snapping undulating battling within you vying for some form of dominance and in the end of this royal rumble of the soul You feel like only one of these groups is going to be victorious. And as you you kind of come out of this fight and the struggle, you find yourself somewhere else altogether. Uh, I'm just going to pull you here. You see a uh, very large animal oh, yeah. beast like form rising out of the stone corner of some wasteland. Not unlike uh, the Gang of Aladdin, if you want to use a reference point. Who dares disturb my slumber? You can feel a heat emanating from this thing. The mouth is open, but it shakes and quivers, loosening rocks and dust. But there's a feeling of life about the thing. I enter. I'm entering it whenever I can. Slowly, not hastily. As you begin to walk in to the tunnel formed by the mouth of this stone-like giant creature head, um, you feel like a wind, like a hot wind, almost pulling you deeper into the into the opening. And a moment later, it's doing the opposite, and and you go like like a. a a wind that could almost knock any normal man or creature over. You take it, but you slide backward, digging your feet in until you're back face to face with the thing. And it lets out like a... And you see the maw kind of move and animate as if come to life. It begins to speak at you in a, a booming, heavy voice. One second. You would 
join with one of us. What do you say, sir? Something much larger and louder. If you would join with one of us. Almost with disdain. Hmm. It just breathes evenly, expectantly. I, yes. Hmm. I don't know. We all enjoy a good riddle amongst ourselves. How clever are you? Help, orc kind of sniffs. My skin is rough and brown. Come spring, I wear a crown. But after fall, I have no hair at all. What am I, humanoid? And the mouth kind of like almost fully closes, but not entirely. There's still like warmth and light emanating out. We'll leave you with that for a moment. <laughs> Daryl. Cut to Daryl and his belt is off and he's dropping his head. <laughs> <laughs> Very slowly pulling the <laughs> Oh shit. Pulling, uh, pulling him back up. <laughs> <laughs> the stone still swirls closely around you. Oh. You see, similar to the others, bluish runes, cyan colors kind of all illuminate, forming this cylindrical prison around you almost. And you begin to float off the ground for a moment, the stone floating and just swirling in front of you, almost forcing you to stare, excuse me, inside of it. Oh. And you begin to float higher and higher. At least it feels like it. And for a moment, you feel like you're above it all, quite literally. Like you are hovering above the known universe, looking down upon it from the galaxies as if you were a god. What once would have been a maze with a predefined path, confusing to some, is now just a simple series of shapes with every conceivable cheat, shortcut, or workaround at the tip of your fingers. The sudden burst of omniscience is too much for you. And just as you see the secrets of the universe spilling out from you, you also see them slipping away from your grasp. But you reach and try to grab hold of one of them before it all slips away. One of them to take back with you. And as you reach, you tumble over the edge of the rock that you're on. And you start tumbling through space. And your vision blurs and you reappear someplace else oh. <laughs> oh it was almost a nat 100 <laughs> oh my god that's a nat 4 <laughs> well, uh, that doesn't well, mean something bad <laughs> if, if, if people want to we can take a, a quick peek at like all the scenes or places the other people saw at the end I don't even mind right now yeah 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 okay, okay. Mm. So, um, what is Darryl, that? I float back down to out it? the ground. You see uh -oh. what appears to be like almost like an octopus, um, but some kind of like infinitely tentacled thing that forms into like an eye mask with glowing red eyes and runes up and down each and every tentacle. It grasps large stones with runes of power etched and glowing into them and it coils around the entire area seemingly everywhere as you look around and see the occasional reddish glow of a rune on a tentacle somewhere up above you are floating underwater or in space but either way you're floating in some sort of enclosure that is dominated by this creature of power lurking and looming before you the face is probably several hundred feet up, undulating on top of this bed of tentacles. The runes occasionally glow, almost like uh, uh, lights on, on the runway, uh, illuminating the way to go for a plane. Like It's just kind of like a pathway. 
every now and again they light up and the eyes Ooh. and nostril holes flare and glow brighter red almost as if uh, it's summoning your presence i follow the runway uh and then while i do that i also I cast detect magic um, well, I'm trying to click that button, but it doesn't do anything. You're um, you're surprised to notice that your connection to magic uh, or anything along those lines feels like a distant memory while you're in this place. Oh, never mind then. I just go up. Pretty lights. Drop your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever we're going, we don't need pants. Um, as you begin to approach, like the tentacles kind of spread, almost making like a like a valley or a pathway towards the looming face. And you don't see anything resembling a mouth so much as you hear the underwatery jiggling, echoing sound of a voice inside your mind. Grant you great power, but power warrants a sharp mind to house it. Yeah, uh, my mind is real sharp. You can almost feel something like extracting memories from your mind before it formulates its next words inside uh, of that same mind. Uh, mm. <laughs> when a bride Fuck. sees us coming. Her joy disappears. But a man in his garden is glad for our tears. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just like a weird in your back of your brain giggle. Um, <laughs> pitch. So, so Pitch wanders back and forth like he begins pacing he says no food i cook will ever fill me and yet one simple drink will kill me and he walks back and forth and back and forth and he kind of like like he lets out a sigh and as he does so he looks up and he sees before him fireflies many of them all floating around him and he kind of smiles and gives himself a little head nod and is like, ah, no food I cook will ever fill me. Yet one simple drink will kill me. I say, and I turn and look at the giant tree and say, I say fire. It would have to be a small fire, but fire nonetheless. And I kind of like offer my suggestion, my answer. The beard and brows rustle. There's like, choke on breath. There's like a wind of excitement, and the fireflies dance. That's correct. You will have more chance, more chances than many, oh, no. to connect with the energy that suits you. Hmm. And with that, second. With that, you see all of this. You're kind of like back to viewing that time lapse of all of these primal forces, cosmic rays, moonlight, casting beams down upon a water, sun connecting with the plant. And you kind of like 
just feel this energy around you. So right now, out of character a little bit, I'm going to share with you a uh, a random generator table. You guys will okay. see it show up on your tabs once I share it. So it's not there yet for all of you. Um, and essentially, with the Ent Spirit's blessing, um, you will get to cycle through this time lapse experience three okay. times instead of once. Oh and shit! Choose, and choose the one that you like the most. And the tables are set up. Ooh. The tables are set up so that once something's been drawn, it can't be drawn again until I unlock it again. So oh, that's awesome. Okay. Be, yeah. Um. So. This should do it. So if you look on the, it's like right before the music note, the roll tables tab, you yep. should see primal stone table. Can I roll? And so you can click roll. Interesting. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me write these down. Um, okay. Roll again. Yep. Hmm. All right. Okay, also interesting. Dude. <laughs> okay, also oh, yeah. interesting. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, you can have a think on that while we go back to Rhaegar. Yeah, uh, one question about that riddle. Uh -huh. Did he say, I am this thing? Or what did he say? What, like, did or was he just asking what no, this no, thing no. is? No, no, no. He he was asking what he's describing. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, I'm writing it out here. I have to change my context. Yeah, no worries. Do you need another few moments? No. <laughs> oh, and then I, as I say it, I have I cast uh this. And I shoot forth vines. Instead of Ooh. shooting them out of my hands, they come up to my hands. And they tw twinkle around me. They they wrap around me as if they're... I'm rooted. Okay. Um, the strange creature <laughs> formation seems surprised and pleased. And strong. And clever, you are more worthy than I anticipated. Similarness described to pitch. You may have the same option, where you would have only had one choice, you may have three. And so the creature kind of describes it as such. Yeah, I remember these. Have every reach uh, this universe imagined real or unreal otherworldly or undead is vying for a joint relationship with your feather you will have a fighting chance at helping one group win over the other Survival of the fittest it is. And you just feel like the stone's power unlock. Mm. And so out of <laughs> character. Yeah. Um, this benefit for you is twofold. Because once you've selected a transformation type, each of those types has any number of sometimes three to over a hundred of options within it. And during those options Christ. as well, the uh, the blessing of the beast spirit will allow you to have three rolls and take the one you choose the most for the most. Oh. Um, so if you want to on that table I just shared, okay. try to figure out oh. the form of what? your choosing. Uh, so if you go to that third, or right before the music note on the roll tables thing, you should see like a transformation stone thing don't see anything sorry hear me on my roll board on the the tabs 
Up at the top right? Not the token HUD thing. It's, it's like, like the, the six in. one over from the left, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. That's oh, music note. okay, yes, yes. I, so I, that I thing, if you open that, and there's a roll thing at the bottom. Jesus, yeah. Holy Jesus, okay. So, so I roll three. Okay. You roll, you roll, you get to roll three times. Each time you roll, it's going to remove it, so you don't get the same thing twice. And then you get to pick the form that you are most intrigued by. So remove this one, or no? You don't do one. any. You don't. It, so that's an option. You can roll again. Hmm. <sighs> what? What is this? This is what I get to be? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Ew. Um. <laughs> can, uh, can I answer another question? <laughs> What's that? Is that what you're saying? Can I answer another riddle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh, they're all the same. Yeah, okay. um, we'll come back. We'll come back. Take um, next week. Daryl. Clouds. <laughs> the tentacles seem pleased. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> the tentacles seem pleased? No, no, no. What did the answer? say? <laughs> Clouds. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. When, when Daryl got the riddle, he was like, <gasps> and then it cut away. <laughs> Come back. Clouds. Um... You hear the, the voice in the back. Power shall be granted. Um, and you feel the power stone <gasps> open up some of its options to you. Uh, so you should be able to see that and have three rolls off of it. When you say see that, it's in the um. So in the top far, far right of Foundry, there's like that music note symbol. Right to the left of that should be the roll tables tab. Oh fuck. Uh, me, uh compendium and then gears, and then that's it. Oh, wait to the, the right of the music um, note. No, to the left of the music note. Oh, there it is. Ah, power stone. I see it. Yes. And so then um, you can roll nice. on that Just hit roll. table. Um, how, do I roll three times? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> I want it. I want it. <laughs> oh my god <sighs> look at this fucking table man I mean so do I get to choose one that I wield the power over that's correct alright I'm gonna whisper it to you okay Everyone want to whisper me uh, a select? Well, Casey, yeah, we need you have a, a second stage that needs to be done once you've picked one of those three. Okay, and so Daniel, um, <laughs> thanks for the whisper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, thanks for the whisper, buddy. I think you got it. It was it's a decoy. It. It's a decoy. That's right. It's a decoy. Hang on. Let me do the real thing. <laughs> I don't know. I know nothing. Um, <laughs> you, you said this is what we wield power over? Or is that what you said? Yeah, so... Oh. For the transformation stone and from the um, Captain Fizzle Claw's um, logbook, yeah, yeah, it's it, it belie- it's believed that like with the transformation stone, you would like become one with that creature type, mm. and essentially be able to shift into it or use it in in strange ways. And out of character, like a lot of the things weird or cool as they may sound. Like, I only have a very loose framework set up for this. So, like, if there's, like, if you try to pursue a a use or, like, you know, it, imagine it's, like, someone, like, feeling, like, some new strange spark of, of power or thing and trying to figure out how to use it. Like, you're mostly limited by your imagination and how you could, could weaponize or utilize some of these things. Um, for the, so for the transformation one, uh, those are the categories or classes of creature types that you would become transformative with. Okay. Oh my god. Dude, Can I hero point and reroll? Yeah, I, I sent you a message, Kitty. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, yeah. You know what? Let's say the, the spirits... We're so impressed, and they they sense something about you. You can all burn your hero points. Mm-hmm. The spirits will allow you to have three more attempts to grasp at a different Whoa, three more of power. Oh my god! Energy. <clears throat> well, let's go. Oh, on. Wow. We'll, we'll start back at the beginning with pitch. Okay. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> if I get worse rolls, can I have? Can I use the burn hero point. Can I have six to choose from, or only three? Like, is it, I'm just curious how how to, how to take this. Oh, uh, no, so you would have three more rolls on your form type, and then you would still have six rolls on the subtype. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Cool. Thank you. I will make sure. Wow. All right. Back me, over to Rhaegar. Bring my oops, bring my hero point. Uh, uh, I don't even want to look. Reasons, oh god. Okay. Well, sick. Okay, great, okay. I'll think about this a little bit more. Yep, come, okay. back me, come back to me. Okay. Uh, Daryl? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Oh. Uh, why can't I see all of your rolls? Oh, you can see my rolls too. Cool. Yeah, I can see. Yours. Did not see that. Wow. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be accepting. New Wait. Whispers is in one public? of yours? Is one of yours moist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what I, mean. I could not believe. Like that was the most rarest and random one. Oh my god! <laughs> no, dude. There's, there's in this yeah, list, voice, man. There's a lot of, yeah, there dude. Are. There's a lot of options that are not <laughs> that are up there. You and like just circling back oh to what we, something that was mentioned in a logbook before. Like Galgat was desperate to try to join with more than one stone or even change his <laughs> stone. He really wanted a primal stone. Um, he believed it was possible, but had been unable to find a way. Uh, the only known way that people separated from stones that he was aware of was by killing them, just like you did him. But he believed there was a way. He just had been yet to find it. Uh, Fiddy, there's... Um... I'm... Two... Oh, okay. Um, would it be po- possible to get like kind of descriptions? Like, cause some of these like sort of don't make sense as far as yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I'd choice say am I making? Ar- arguably, um, like as you're kind of like reaching out and trying to grasp onto like one of these threads of power or transformation <laughs> or primal energy, like you feel a connection in, in like a brief attunement to it. Um, so we can circle back to pitch if you have questions, pitch. And if you have questions about one of I the things many. I can give you, I can give you rough ideas that I have in mind. But okay. that's also to say, as mentioned before, if you have like another thing you'd imagine and interpret for it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's some good ones in there. Um, th- then, then that's it's not like I wouldn't shut it down. Um, okay. And and the power, like imagine like a, a a huge skill tree of potential powers and abilities you could form these things to do, or make them become. Um, and if you were working towards manipulating and using the scatter stones power towards that, like that, most things I would say are on the table. It's just a matter of when and how. Um, so, Hitch, you're communing with your your many branching options. What, what yeah. are you What are you latching on to? <clears throat> what do you have questions about? Okay, I have lots of questions because uh, a couple of these are very akin to each other. So. I have mm-hmm. gas and cloud, which yep. both seem somewhat similar, at least in my head. And then I have solar and light, and I, I, at least solar to me maybe speaks more to like fire, maybe than it is. It's not specifically fire, but it's like fire that or light that burns, maybe. Yeah, I mean, solar is more akin to to like the solar energy of the sun, antithesis to like lunar energy from the moon, um, and so you know, My, there's a, there's a, yeah. a lot of things that would would grow and develop from that concept. So that's really interesting to me. And I almost said, yes, solar is absolutely what I should do. And then I looked at my name and I thought, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like maybe literally that's joke. said. Maybe that's your shit. whole deal. You're like Big Tony, who's a real small little guy. I'm light and darkness, bitches. <laughs> um, that's the one that I most gravitate towards for some reason. Uh, gas is also potentially interesting because it could be multiple things. I assume that that means it could be all forms of gas, potentially. Potentially. Uh, all right. Well, hey, we'll come back to you. Uh, Rhaegar, do you have any uh, inquiries? Uh... Admiration. I don't even know what that even is in context of D and D. Just something different. Uh, well, how about I do this for you? Um, aberration. Aberration was something you drew, right? And then what else? Um, I guess a plant or astral. Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, do you want any of the other ones? Oh, um, I mean, I'll just turn them all. Undead was interesting too, I guess. I think it's too far departure. Sure. One, two, three, four. That's five out of six. I don't know what the other one was. Maybe. Oh, fungus, yeah, okay. Uh, so if you look on that roll table page, yep. those are the things you'd be rolling off of, but happy to answer other questions. Essentially, I... so you get you get the sense that you would 
you would gain like the ability to transform into into something along these lines whether it's your whole form part of your form variations on that form um and potentially even abilities in your normal current form related to that thing or type I see. um you know alluding back to the pirate's tale of the sea dragon captain um Daryl, do you have any questions about any of your power stone paths? I do. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> or art. Art is also amazing. I was wanted to be able to draw, but I don't know how. <laughs> Would I be able to draw if I took art? I've always wanted to be an animator. <laughs> <laughs> it's my deepest and wildest dreams. Hold on. I just want to double check one thing. <laughs> oh, secretly want the power of jacket. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Listen, you are, you live in a perfectly comfortable world imagine, at all times. Yeah. yeah. Look, imagine, imagine if you wanted to, that your form was just always perfectly lubricated and slippery, so much so that it could repel direct physical attack, or maybe you can make other things or surfaces lubricated to some strange surfing effect or who the hell knows what. Um... Ladies. Like the imagi your imagination is the only limiter on something like moist. Um, but either way, you could channel and control that power to a a godlike level. Oh my god, if you go with moist, you're gonna be my hero. <laughs> Imagine never having to greet the pan again. Oh my god, dude. Ladies. <laughs> um and I'm guessing art is the same, but for every piece of art I would I, create. You're, you're not sure if it would make you good at art, but you're pretty sure that anything you art did would come to life in some way. <laughs> come uh, to life? Maybe, Holy fuck. Yeah, or, or maybe have some other magical, strange properties. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then Siren. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, think... Sirens of the Sea, or Sonic Sound Waves, or insert Sonic-related creative idea here. Okay. Something related to the Sonic. Sound, is... control, sound forms, waves, okay. hearing. Okay. And is vampiric means I'm a vampire, or I just can steal life force? You're pretty sure that it would allow you to siphon life force to empower yourself to heal you're not sure like you can feel like this sense that like you can take energy from others whether it's blood or something else you don't <gasps> know magic. maybe you can control it in some way or steer it in some way um but the the concept is at the core of that stone's power and i'm guessing nightmare is like sort of psychic or is it i yeah. can only affect people like, who are asleep you're not sure uh and you know, again like a lot of these would come down to your ability to like focus and train and, right. and explore okay. the power of these stones um okay. but nightmare like some rough things that pop into your mind fucking freddy krueger siphoning out yeah. people's worst fears being able to maybe manipulate manipulate them on a psychic level you're not you're not entirely sure but you know that the power of nightmares is something that you could control and ride should you unlock it. Right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is so fun. Oh my god. Hey, how's it going? Man, I'm stuck. I'm I'm stuck on three of them. I I can't narrow past three of them. <laughs> Gotta roll dice. Mm. 
it's like i can i can see i can as so i was thinking about like use well, wise yeah and let me let me reinsert this again right if you can imagine an execution of a concept that connects to that stone in some way i'm fucking game and <laughs> the the stones themselves are going to be like <laughs> almost like their own character with their own branching power paths that are just limited to you connecting with it and trying to use it and trying to direct the power. So mechanically we'll be figuring things out as we go and house ruling a bunch of stuff, thus the strong asterisk about maybe lots of potential patch notes. Um, but the intention with these stones is to, is to be just that limited only to your creative pursuits in the, attempt to channel and focus the concept of the stone's power. Do you see cloud being able to cause like almost like storm could cause like a, a you know, influence the weather in some form or fashion? Like, is that, is that within the realm of possibilities with cloud? Absolutely. Fucking Dragon Ball Z, fly on a Nimbus cloud, become a, a Nimbus cloud, and someone else flies on you. Be like, Whoa. like you when when you're siphoning through ideas for all of this, like imagine the most beautiful Houdini simulation of your entire body just becoming made of a million nanoparticles forming that thing. And in the cloud idea, like you are literally a cloud humanoid. You are made of cloud. Elements that don't affect cloud don't seem to affect you when you're in this cloud-like form. Uh, beyond that, like you're back in your normal form as pitch, able to control and manipulate cloud with some level of mastery. At least these are oh, the threaded God. pathways you feel oh, in dude, front of you as you stare at the I could stone. see so many cool things with cloud, just <laughs> thinking about like cloaking your ship. And just like, I think of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean when they're like, at the very beginning of that that movie when they're all in cloud and like you just like imagine being in an open sea and just being like <laughs> can't can't see us anymore that's really cool mm. controlling a storm in some form or fashion is pretty neat Rhaegar, do you have any explorations of stone that you need to discuss With that, you can't. Sure. Uh, I don't. I don't do. Maybe you're inside. Thirty was for two. Uh, no. No, yeah. Okay. Um, we can do one of two things, and I'm game for either. We can argue that the stones final transformation doesn't lock in until after you kind of zonk out of this place and pick up back inside the fort and what you're doing in the fort yeah. as you come to or we can continue to kind of just um, okay. story I'm mode narrate cool. narrate through some some little q a and explorations of the stones I don't know. Yeah, I I feel a yeah, it it's a little overwhelming cuz you're like, oh shit, this is like <laughs> the yeah. whole character moving it forward is, well, it's like a very I, big moment. I get that. And I mean it is it is intended to be also like a big pile of yes ands and what ifs and you just have to you just you just have to be into the seed of the idea, and I'm pretty confident we can form it into something that's kind of clever and cool, depending on how you tap into it. Is, so do you do you want yeah. do you want to roll off that with your six rolls? I, guess so. I don't know. I guess so. Like so, for instance, like undead's really interesting to me with some story stuff. We well, do, okay, well, well, here, hold, on, hold on, hold on, let me let me just pull something up real quick. Um, because you don't have so this in your have potential. Yeah. But so, would you 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 would have a general understanding of what each thing is, like a, den a general description of which each of those things is? Would you like to ask about some of them, and I can read that to you? Yeah. In terms of yeah. like type of creature or form. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you want to? Which one do you want to start with? That one you just pinged me. Okay. Uh, giant, 
and do it straight out loud. Yeah, that's fine. Keep it chirping your mic a little closer. It got like really quiet. Uh, undead. Okay. Uh, yeah. So undead is basically anything that was considered a once living creature infused with with negative energy and death and uh, soul changing magic. Um, so essentially, like you would have the ability to change between your normal self. And mm-hmm. some incarnation or evolution on one of those many things you have in that list, uh, and change into some kind of like transformed creature. Think more like um, what's like a what's like a show where someone did like a huge transformation. You know, kind of like an almost like an Incredible Hulk to to a Bruce Banner. Um, okay. And so even things in that list are just kind of the seed idea of where those transformations would start. And as you develop them, it would become its own evolved, crazier, I wouldn't say kaiju, but like, you know, kind of more ridiculous evolved form of that thing. But that that's something that would be a process between you and the stone. And that, and that holds true for any of those different forms. Again, that's just the seed of where that transformation type would begin. Um, and on top of that, it would also probably unlock some relatable abilities in your normal form. All right. Um, fuck that. I don't like any of those things. Uh, what about what, astral? Um, astral creatures are creatures native to the astral plane. They can survive the basic environmental effects of the astral plane, uh, unlike common humanoids um so it's just a a wide range of creatures native to that plane would be the source of that transformation type okay okay uh okay i mean that's pretty cool yeah astral plane is pretty interesting all right I've narrowed it down to two. I think I may need to roll off here to see which one I go for. All right. Because I could go for either one and be pretty happy with either direction. So I'm going to roll off. Roll it off, baby. All right. Ooh. Decision made. All right. Was this your final, your final table? Yep. Yeah. He only has, everyone else only had one table. Transformation's kind of nested deep there. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'm ready. I'm keeping mine too. I'm going to roll. All right. Uh, so you're going to do the sub subgroup roll? Yeah. You're rolling off for the main one. Subgroup. Right. Uh, uh, so it's meant to be cool and fun. Um, <laughs> perfect. I don't even know what that means. That's what it'll be. Well, you get five other rolls if you want them. Five others? Oh, yeah. okay. You, I don't even know if there are that many astrals. Oh, no, there's not. Yeah, there's not, actually. You would get to, because you got Astral, it's one of the smaller ones. You would get to... Just okay. Pick. Okay, let me... Let me you need to roll. roll homework. Yeah. I, can I do a little homework? I don't know. I am so unfamiliar. Yeah, uh, yeah hold on. I'll send you a link. I haven't done much homework on any of this. Let's I check. didn't expect to go Astral. I didn't even know that was an option this game. Or whatever I win, you know? For nobody who knows. Hmm. Like Dave's first, like sand, dirt, wet sand. (laughs) 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 Yeah, that was like my dog. Yeah. Uh, All right. Does this thing fucking work or what? Hold on. Oh, that's why.
So you can sort if you click a uh, creature type, it'll sort by type. And you can sneak a peek at some of the types. So I mean, like you could imagine, and this is just a very loose frame of reference. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but you could imagine that, like, say, for example, one of those astral creatures, some of the idea of their abilities uh, and it would be like the base or the starting seed of inspiration for what you would tap into. And then I imagine we'd develop some, some abilities and powers in the realm of something like that as you progressed with the stone. On top of being able to transform into one of their forms or types. Uh, Kluge, were you sticking with yours or were you thinking about changing it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, just read that. Let me yeah. know if any of that is vibing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I think all I think all things around that would be totally viable pursuits. Okay. <laughs> I'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I'll let me copy. Uh, um. Were, did he say that all of this? <clears throat> yeah, never mind. It's fine. I'll find out. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Daryl. Oh yeah. You, the swirling light begins to dissipate. And before you know it, you're you're surrounded by uh, just a green swirling energy back in the floating abyss of time and space where you, you started off in this place. Um, let me pull you back here. Ooh. Uh, and you see a walkway form bef before you made of some of the floating stones that leads down to like a now open portal that looks like a way back. Oh. Um, where's everybody else? You do not see anybody else at the moment. Uh, I stepped through it. Maybe I think everyone went through it already. Okay. Um, you begin to make your way down, approach the portal. Making my way down, down. And as you Mittens. walk through, you find Mittens waiting <laughs> for you. Father. Uh, one second. And you're back in the study of the of the main hall of the ancient keep. Oh, Alex here. Well, we'll come back to you in a second. But you, you see Alec kind of like open his eyes and look up at you, still resting down on the ground uh, amongst the corpses of the captain <sighs> and the henchmen. Um, hmm. Bitch. You yeah. Honing in on anything? Oh, you already rolled, right? Oh, Sorry. I I I made a choice. Me. Got it. Perfect. Okay. Uh, you also get pulled back into. Dun, 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 dun. Do you see that very same walkway in front of you, but no one else around? Okay. Do I appear? Where do I appear? Oh. You can spill okay. out of the portal. I see. Um, can I make my way to the 
the other portal down here. Yeah, yeah. There's a it's like a floating, almost ever connected, small gapped bit of, of yep. rock. I go that, that way. way. Actually, I pity. Hmm. I hold my hand out in front of me, and I look all around me, and it's almost like I try to pull whatever condensation is in the air around me. I begin hmm. to just see if see if I can pull anything. I'm almost like just looking at my hand to see if I can form anything. And I, I don't want to take the path in front of me. Instead, I want to form something at my feet that will carry me to the portal. I don't know if I can do that, but... Hmm. You, uh, you feel a tingle when you try to do that. Hmm. Um, I'd like you to look at the roll tables tab again and see the body part one. And then click quick roll on that for me. You only get one roll on this one. <laughs> ah! You feel yeah! a tingling sensation in your forehead Dude. and realize that the stone is lodged in part of your actual forehead. What was that rapper who got like a crazy diamond embedded oh. in his forehead? It's actually really fucking mm. cool on pitch. Dude, I was thinking... Some people don't think it's cool, but like with Pitch, he's got two horns already and two eyes that are different colors. And so the fact that there's also now a gym that it, it literally like blends into his actual mm. scalp now. Yeah, it, it seems cool. like it's part of of just him. It, it doesn't look like oh it's yeah, him that's just like popping out, but it looks pretty fucking badass. Do you you feel? You almost feel like moisture brimming up inside there. Um, but you find either your connection with this thing is too weak at the moment, or perhaps this place is protected from the power of the stones. You almost see some of like the raw natural crystal growths embedded in some of these platforms and other rocks, almost like glimmer as you try to channel this power. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do what you expect, at least okay. not now. Uh -huh. Stone to stone to stone to stone to stone until I get to the entrance. Okay. Now you make your way back and step through and see Daryl getting ready to look over towards Alex Dagram uh, as you reform on the other side. Um, let me pull you in a second. Rhaegar, how you doing? Do I go in this hole? What's that? Is that am, I supposed to go, am I supposed to go in this hole? Have you, uh, oh, is the thing you whispered me, uh, yes. where you're going with that? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Actually, let me, let me just have a super quick look. See I didn't do a lot of theory crafting. I, I'm grasping at some pretty thin straws here, but I, I think I can see some things that fit. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so similar experience for you. Uh, you you hone in on something and find yourself back in the uh, original. Yeah, you finally go through the mouth exactly. Um, just pull you over, and you spill out of this portal. Um, you're not wearing many clothes. Can I voluntarily place it somewhere? Like a one? Uh, you cannot. I need you to roll on the body part table for me. Oh, yeah. Where's that thing? Come on, baby. You know what I want. You know what I want. Come on. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as you step forward, you feel protrusion just slightly coming out of your hand. I mean, it's up, to, it's up to you how it's in your hands, but it is broken in two and embedded in each of your hands Whoa. in some fashion. The stone? Thought, yeah. Yeah, the scatter stone. 
and you know like it, they're very thematic in terms of like the way they look and 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 how you know what swirls inside of them the color the hue the type of crystal or stone very thematic with your choice so i mean if you, you could probably use a little creative liberty and the appearance of it and how it's attached or embedded in that location yeah i feel like my hands look rock hard and jaggedy like even mm. my knuckles, if you look closer you would see almost like they crusted yeah they weren't the shape of actual knuckles Ooh. they're actually more jagged and sharper edged yeah, like almost oh, like a bone yeah. was protruding, but instead it's like encrusted gems, kind of like embedded in like your underskeleton. Yeah, yeah. it's amber. Mm. What's like, oh, you know what I'm picturing? Like, you know, like sometimes those creatures, what, I forget what they're called, but like any creature that has like little nub or bone growth, like around the skin and the skin sort of forms around it, but it looks really natural and, and almost imagining like you're, hands and fists and like maybe even up to the forearm a little bit encrusted in a like kind of natural looking way that's what i have nice. i have that all right um i imagine you eventually follow the pathway down towards the inviting portal uh, oh yes sorry uh no it's not good this hole uh you came out of that and then you see like oh. this little pathway down towards this little portal here Oh, do, shit. Do, do, do. My bad. Yeah. No, good. Um, yeah. <laughs> let me get there. <clears throat> Klug, where's your crystal embedded? Um, <laughs> he starts pulling his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll for us, Daryl. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where is it? Oh, yeah, there. Uh, oh, God. Oh, just like uh, <laughs> the captain. Sweet. Uh, it's like a belly button jewel. Is that what's going on? Up to you. I mean, just somewhere can, like embedded in your abdomen. It's up to you how and where within there. Uh, yeah, it's like a belly button jewel. How about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> on brand. Hell yeah. Uh, um, the gem encrusted pot belly chef. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your road hog. <laughs> oh, I yeah. am. Oh my god. Snort. Oh, you've got it in your forehead. <laughs> I I have what? <laughs> like I so... put my hands on my forehead. Like, what do you? Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, do you have a? And I hold up like Boop. a. <laughs> I don't know, like an arrowhead or something to try to get a look at. What about your blade? Yeah, get my oh. battle axe. It's very shiny. Oh, look at that. Oh, shit. That... <laughs> Do you it think feels, that this is a looks pretty good. problem? Do you think it's a problem? I mean, I mean, Alec is, is kind of looking at cool, you all with, but... with some level of curiosity. You three have been levitating there swirling about with those stones for at least a minute and you just dropped and snapped out of it as if you'd come back from some trip oh uh, well we were certainly on some trip certainly yep that was, that was a trip <laughs> pretty cool trip his mouth kind of like goes agape as his sleepy eyes go as wide as they can he has uh, in you. Yeah. Well, um, and I kind of like rub my forehead and like a. I'm not sure what to do. Am I gonna have to wear like an eye patch or something now? A head. But, <laughs> oh, to hide it. <laughs> oh shit. Oh no. Do you have to hide it? Is that you have to hide it? Well, I oh, guess. Oh, we should hide it. The question is, is like it sort of draws attention to itself, right? A little bit. Do we want to draw attention <laughs> to ourselves? Oh, shit. They're scatter stones. I think people want them for power. Based off of what I've read, would people understand what, like, if they saw on, 
the hands, on the belly, on the forehead, if they saw that, would they know that it was a scatter stone? Or you think it... some would. Some would? Okay. Yeah. You, uh, you, you, you could probably legend. find plenty of, of towns and islands and places where people would have no idea what it was. Or they might have some superstitions about it and not know, you know, what it actually is, but still think it means something. Wrote. And then there are definitely <laughs> other people who would know exactly what it is. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think I need an eye patch or <laughs> something. That's unfortunate. Okay. Well, what should we do? Oh, we were looking for someone. We're looking for um the navigator. The navigator, he's a hobbit. I don't know if you guys want to take a old rest here. Uh, or Alec. Oh, Alec looks like he's about to die. Yeah. <laughs> mm. There's dead bodies here, though. Didn't you let out a bear earlier, Rhaegar? Oh! Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they threw me out there. Do you think he would come in here and murder us? If he were hungry. Okay. So <laughs> do you think we should drag the body here of this fellow as an offering of peace and just let him, you know, <laughs> di digest? Uh, we might. Oh, yeah. The uh, stone that was in him is gone. Out, right? Yeah, it's no longer there. Yep. Yeah. One, yes. Yeah. Any of those embers. Yeah. Yeah, let's drag him out there. Yeah, both guys or one of them? Both of them. Oh, the big guy. Oh big shit! Big guy first. I think it takes all three of us to drag the big guy out. Yeah, he's huge. I mean, Rhaegar is pretty strong, but yeah, it probably doesn't hurt to have sure. helping hands. All right. Yeah. All right. Put him there. Yeah. All right. We're out here. Do we see Wait, the other? Yeah, right? uh, I want... You do not see him. Okay. I uh, you do before. see some blood pretty easily going that direction. Okay. I drag this. I try to drag this body up to the useless emperor bird where it was, where its corpse once was. Okay. Away from uh, our door. Make a uh, perception check. The blood's a freebie. Anyone could have spotted that shit. Um, you hear. The sounds of what you think are a slumbering Ymir echoing out of like the corridor uh, near, I think, is the one you guys didn't go up to the closest to the secret door. Okay. Um, but you leave the body there and then head back. What are you doing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm closing this door too, by the way, the southern door. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm gonna go back through here. Not gonna wall. Damn it. Get out of that wall. There we go. Um, so what all did you guys see? Because that was a weird fucking experience. I talked to a tree and I a riddle and then felt, I don't know what I felt, something. How are you guys feeling? Just happy it wasn't a suppository. Oh, <laughs> that would have been surprising. Talk about a power. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I communed with some sort of eternal being with um, runes and tentacles, and I'm pretty sure it was uh, otherworldly, as they say. Do you, and, uh, do yep. you feel different? Uh, yes. Very sweaty. Okay. <laughs> you feel... look in Daryl's a little sweaty. <laughs> Do you feel moist? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the perfect word for it. <laughs> there is a little bit of a glisten about him. <laughs> a little bit of a healthy glow. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Are you and are you true I... to your token image here? Like, do you sometimes wear a shirt? Or are you right now topless? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just checking. Uh, you. So I see you glistening, and oh. I, I want to hold up my hand and see 
if I can pull some of the moisture off of you. Uh, can you? I don't know. I'm I'm trying I'm trying shit. Uh, just roll a naked d20. All right. You uh. Oh, stop! Give it back. <laughs> you see a bit of like like a, a bead of perspiration uh like almost begin to like pluck and peel itself away from like this glistening bit of, of, okay. of daryl's back neck like you're looking wow. behind his neck and like doing this and just joe you, know, you feel like a slight little tickle uh I, I hold it in my hand like this and then i'm gonna turn and i'm just gonna close it and see if i can't make a little um for for a brief moment like as as the thing's like traveling through the air it it dissipates into nothing and like the tip of your finger almost disappears for a moment into like a wispy little form of what it once was and it's almost like a a, a trick of the eye for a moment because it, it's so quick um but you're pretty certain it happened shit did you see that yeah oh, that's cool you you also have the power of moistness. I don't know if it's moistness, but <laughs> Rhaegar, look at what me. What do you do with your moistness? I'm pretty sweaty myself. <laughs> I put my arms up in the chest. I am so he also, he also has the power of moistness. I feel like moisture <laughs> is important to whatever it is that I I don't know whatever happened. Yeah, me too. I spoke with a big sand cat. <gasps> sand, a cat. sand cat. Interesting. And what did a sand cat? He oh. made me these hands. I hold up my hands, and you just see how sharp it. They almost look rasterized or like stylized. Yeah. You know, like a Photoshop layer. <laughs> <laughs> like they're oh, almost shit. Like. Square and edges around even my fingers when I hold them up. Are you? Is that hurt? I like poke it. <laughs> is that hurt? Uh, Rhaegar, yeah. I'd like you to uh, roll so a weird. will a will saving throw. Huh. Um. As you're demonstrating your hands and kind of like turning them over, you feel almost like a lump of your bone dislodge and separate from the knuckle. And like suddenly floating between you and the others, not too dissimilar from when you had the experience of the scatter stones floating around you all, you see kind of like a small ethereal gem floating free from your control and for a moment you feel as if like a part of yourself is disconnected and your your mind was in two places at once but you kind of snap out of it and you and the thing just like reforms through your knuckle and back into your hand oh well, that was weird what? Dude, i'm gonna roll to see how bad it hurt <laughs> didn't, pretty sure it didn't feel too good. <laughs> you're, oh. Ooh. you're real manly about it, though. <laughs> Does it hurt every single time? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So, that's the first time I've said it, but yeah. Oh. Ugh. Um. Yeah, I'm just enamored. I'm just I'm like waving my hand, or I'm doing weird stuff trying to figure out what on earth happened. Hmm. But I mean, it's fine if nothing happens. But just just trying to feel it out, trying like putting my hand out, like just trying to get a sense. Yeah. I mean, I'd say each and every one of you feels different to some extent. And whenever you think about it or, or, or try to channel it in some way, you can feel something stirring within you emanating from where the stone sits, a part of you. 
Um, but you definitely feel like you're a, an infant child trying to figure out how to walk up steps. Like you haven't even begun to crawl yet. Mm. Uh, mm. But you can feel you can feel the latent energy inside of you. You can you can feel the theme of its source. You know, different thoughts are entering your mind as you've returned to your senses in in the the bottom of this keep. You know, Daryl, I I stop for a second. And I'm like, you wear a cap, you know? Yeah. Do you yeah. think you think I could pull nice. that off with the horns here to help hide this old, you know? Of, uh, what if you cut? Holes for your horns. That might work. Maybe. I don't know. Could you help me? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Daryl whips out another do-rag. <laughs> <laughs> this one's mine, so... Uh, but I have a spare. And then <laughs> he, like, goes... He's really good at crafting, too. So he, like, measures oh, yeah. the distance yeah, between yeah. your horns and everything. It's Checks like, okay, out. hang on. Get some knife out and cut some holes in here. Okay, hang on, got to uh, fold it once and then uh, measure twice, cut once. Uh, I'm going to craft. <laughs> All right. Hey! Damn. Wow, that is a snug, well-fitting, but, stylish do-rag that oh, yeah. accents you in all the right places. Except I look at my horns. Can you imagine trying to get a do-rag over the horns and then fit super snugly on my you head? Figure it out. You figured it <laughs> out. I put holes in the duet. Yeah. Right yeah. It's a, yeah. You guys, you yeah, it's a bit of origami. It's like elastic where it stretches no, out no, over no. the horns. And, and <laughs> it <no>. fits. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, if it's you a wanted bit of a, folding I, if, magic. Hey, if you wanted like a whole head wrap thing, Daryl could have definitely done that if you requested it. Well, cool. <laughs> I, like a, I like the do rag. I'm going to wear it for now. See how it goes. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay. It's a, wait, can I get a full res picture of your avatar? Yeah, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a paint over. I'm gonna have to get some Photoshop going. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to Photoshop myself here. I think. Yeah, I, I just wait, imagine got, Michael Scott. To one. Hold on. Oh no, <laughs> not Michael Scott. Oh god, please don't do this. To me. <laughs> uh, I got you. Hold on. <laughs> don't you do this to me. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, paint. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that one, not that one. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, I like the colors. Look at that. Oh, yeah. There you go. Purple and purple. Nice. Dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alec, yeah, man. That'll totally work. Who could do that? Alec is kind of um watching you all with a still a little bit black job. He's, he's regained his composure a bit. <laughs> um, he says, uh, I've, I've heard of these stones. You've joined with them. He asks oh. a little inquisitively. Shit, we should have mm-hmm. offered you one of them. Um, <laughs> this is awkward. No, yeah. No. That's not for me. Well, I'm not Some sure if it's for me either. Oh no, there's, I don't have Photoshop anymore. Some, Shit. There's tell some seekers utilizing the stones as well as pirates, but I'm following in the old ways. I respect that. I would say me too, except that's not the case. You still seem like yourselves. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, Hmm. I mean, we are, I think. Clue, when I... And then it popped up on the bottom of my screen like that Discord message and said, Oh no, I can't Photoshop. You'll have to open the open mouth. 
<laughs> it, didn't, it didn't have the symbols on it when it popped up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like just had like the the shorthand of the name of the emote. <laughs> You'll have to open now. <laughs> God. Uh, oh shit. Yo. Um. Yeah. Um, Alex seems a little bit mystified and, and a little bit concerned, but it doesn't appear to be changing his opinion of you. It'll be just... okay, Alex. And yeah. I smack him on the back with my new rock hands. No, it's, it's Alec. <laughs> yeah, oh. Mm. I was never very good with names. Mm. <laughs> um... Well, I suppose we should maybe open these doors, except the one that you're standing next to, Alec, because that was the one that they were going for last Did time. We a rest here? Did someone say something about a rest? Actually, maybe we yeah, should. Rest. When was a, how long has it been since we rested last? Because like, <clears throat> I want to say that we rested last time and we leveled up, so it hasn't been... Yeah, actually, long. it's a really good point. It's, it's really been a while. I'm out of... It's Yep. It's it's only been a couple hours since you woke up last. <laughs> Although to you all, it feels like a lot of time has passed, but if you check with Alec on the time and uh in reality only about two hours has passed. Oh you know, the time I spent trying to answer that riddle of what I wanted to be when I grew up. It's the hardest question Rhaegar has ever had to answer. <laughs> what what was the riddle? Yeah. Well, I got the riddle part right. It was just what I wanted to do with myself when I got older. Oh, I see. Hmm. I grew up. That was the hard part. That's always the hard part, isn't it? Well, I say we open up that door up to the north east. What do you guys say? Want to open it up? See what new powers we possess? Yes. Sure. Alec, well, um, do you want to go fast? Yeah. You look all weak and shit. Alec, you want to stay here and we'll just figure shit out and then if we need you, we'll call for you? Did we rest at any point? Hmm. I don't think he we did, right? His, uh... Yeah, it's fine. I'll just He's kind of like picking the, the chair back up that was near the desk and flips it over and oh. takes a seat. Oh, and Alec, by the way, there's a huge monstrosity of a bear outside. <laughs> if you want to come with us, totally respect that if you want to rest and, you know, I'll just, just let close you know. The, the door first and then sit down. Fiddy, yeah. I think it a piece of rock fell out of my hand. Like, something came off of me. Yeah. I want to well, before I walk away too far away. Well, I like, no, I mean, like, but like, when you made that will save, like, yeah. It, it kind of reformed with you, and it was oh, weird. You felt you felt like a piece of your own mind had fragmented. I already don't theory. like where this is going. Um. Well, I listen behind this door, see if I can hear anything. I gesture for you guys to do the same because I can't hear shit. Me with a perception check, please. Uh, you don't hear anything. It sounds eerily silent. I don't know if that's a good thing or if this door has a tremendous DC. Yeah, I put in the 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 key that I have and I try to unlock it. If it's locked, and I push it open. Feel like. It is locked, and you easily push it open and see I'm what appears to be a mostly pilfered armory. <sighs> oh my hey. god! I'm Far quiet as nobody knows he's there. Shit. No one can hear me. Um, Bitch. you are Bitch. amazingly, um, amazingly quiet as you sneak and, and prance around the room, scoping it. And it is indeed just 
Uh, empty weapon racks lining the place, repair forges long abandoned and cold, sitting in a lonely row towards the back where you now stand. Uh, a, a crude lean-to seemingly made from bits of rope and ripped leather. Um, this was clearly some sort of like workshop slash armory storage room. Uh, but as you're stealthily maneuvering around the place, being careful to glance at every every mm. corner so as not to step in the wrong place. You can't help but notice smeared on the far wall to the north, just above uh, that long abandoned and, and cold forge, uh, scrawled in crude fashion uh, in draconic, uh, no less. You see it says, Beware, my dragon spelled just like this beware of mighty dragons oh shit well dragons. you said it's in draconic right yeah but it's, it's on this north wall this far wall there scrawled in there crudely okay so there's two things that I want to do first I want to see if I can find any bolts in this room. Oh, hold on. I'm still back in this astral plane. I thought it made me back here. But my <laughs> uh -oh. space bar never made me back. Oh, uh, let me pull you back. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the pool. I'm in the pool! <laughs> I was in that pool! I, I thought I was out of the pool. I must have, like, a certain, I must have had a bad... Oh, I did. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Pitch has stepped into that room and started sneaking around pretty quietly while you were shouting at her. Him, her, uh, it. Um, and uh, Pitch, what are you doing? Since you're kind of just taking point there for a moment. So uh, two things. It's like as I'm looking around, I'm, before I see the draconic writing, I'm looking for bolts for a crossbow. And then... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's probably there's probably a few bundles of bolts strewn about in some of the. I mean, there's lots of old uh, ammunition in this place. What would you say? Is basic weapons, uh, like twenty. Like there are probably at least several bundles of twenty. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna put myself at a cool like fifty bolts here. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, that's five L whatever L is. Large. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see the draconic writing, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" Well, that's kind of cool. And then I kind of give a very low sort of whistle that hopefully doesn't carry too much, but just enough to get the attention of my allies. Hmm. Yeah. And, and while you're doing it, like you, you feel something, and mittens is already like curled and walking between your legs like you never oh. even heard or saw it approach perfect 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 mittens is uh, Sensing. uh smelling Sensing. yeah imprecise um, 30 feet okay um interesting uh have mittens make a perception check Ooh. Uh, where is that? How come I don't I see it in his list? Open the sheet. Oh, there it is. I see it. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Mittens kind of like... And like starts looking towards the door. Are you, You're able to communicate with Mittens, right? Uh, Mittens will just straight up talk to Pitch. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, hold on. I'll There's monstrosity the behind the door. <laughs> <clears throat> There's something there. Eyes ah, looking towards the door that pitched mm. me in. Mm. Okay. I give a low whistle. Feel free to read that in creepy mittens voice. I just wanted to type it out. Yeah. Oh, I can't read it. Oh, what did I type in? You, you Elvish? Just... I don't know what is that. Oh, <laughs> huh. 
I could read it. Just I, like, it. I love Mitten's language, and it's so good. It's weird. It says it's listed in common. Huh. Oh, it's beautiful. You have common on your thing? I do have common, yeah. it's. It, right. I only have common in my list. Oh, you know what? I have Mitten selected. Do I need to select... Oh, dude, if I select uh, my character, now it, it, it translates It translates? Mitten. Oh, that's cool. Whoa. So Mitten can't read or write, but he can talk. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> that's, Whoa. that's wild. Okay, yeah. Smells yeah. like kobolds. They went that way. I don't know if we're looking for kobolds. As far as you knew, Calmont was a halfling, or is a halfling. Yeah, I kind of say, oh, well, Mittens, maybe we come back here if we can't find him somewhere else. And I come back through the door very stealthily. Uh, I just sort of appear next to you guys. I'm like, oh, so I think we found kobolds. There's writing on the wall that's in Draconic. Um, I think maybe I saw a door farther south to us. So maybe we explore further south and then we could come back here if we can't find uh, Calmont. What do you say? Well, like good idea. Right. Indeed. I kind of sort of lead down through this passageway over here. All right. And then go up to this door and I wait for everybody and I'm like, I'm not super great at listening. Maybe you guys are better at it. <laughs> Mittens, Mittens is smelling through the anything. other door. Yeah, Mittens yeah. doesn't sense anything as it work, walks through the other room. Um, are either of you? Hmm, okay. Um, Rhaegar, you're pretty confident there is nothing moving or making sound in that next room. Okay. Oh, I think it's still. All right. Well, you want to go in? You want me to stealth my way in, or what do you want to do here? Yeah. All right. I'm going <laughs> to quietly go in. You stay here if you yeah. hear screaming like a girl, then come rushing in. All right. Okay. All right. Stealthily open the door. Okay. Nice. Um, as you do that, uh, you open the door to see a halfling suspended upside <gasps> down, floating in the air. Oh shit, okay. I found him. I'd like you to make a perception check. Oh great. I'm Anyone so else perception looking check. Looking through I'm the gonna... door can also make a perception check. When he gasped like this, I, I peeked in. Uh... <sighs> it was just a peek. <sighs> One second. <laughs> hey, just a little peek. You know, I only looked at in there with one eyeball, and I also only have one eyeball, so, you know, but that's worth that's Full <laughs> perception. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Pitch and Rhaegar, you both noticed that not only is Calmont just suspended like with only the most subtle bits of movement like he is like almost frozen in a pose um but you both notice small other objects kind of floating near him you couldn't really make out what exactly they varied in size and shape um but he's not alone like there appear to be things floating around him or suspended around him okay for my stealth check earlier, I'm gonna make my way yeah, inside. Yeah, so um, Moving and very sorry, slowly. In terms of like the rest of the room, this appears to be like another uh, armory that's still a little bit more stocked with more shelving and like areas for suits of armor to sit. Um, some yeah. of the armor racks in the distance beyond where Kalmont is suspended uh, appear to be. Um, toppled over, scattered about. There's anvils, hammers, tool sets, other supplies lingering about on top of workstations. Um, 
What's everyone else doing as Pitch starts Darryl, going into the room? Daryl, this way. What's going on? Navigator. <gasps> the Navigator! The little one, he's in here. Mittens, come on. Wow. I'm pushing. What is this, the sushi buffet? Alec uh, hears the commotion and starts to... 30 gets all the way to here, yeah. Make his way behind Mittens. Downtown. Make my way down, honey. Uh, as you all move in, you see the same thing described to, to Pitch <gasps> and Rhaegar. It's... Like an upside-down, suspended, in pose, halfling. Um, as you get closer, the three of you may that. make a perception check. I also want to detect magic if I can. Okay. I'm coming to percept. Percept you, baby. Let's get the perception checks first. Yeah. What's this guy doing? Huh. Just hanging upside Claire, down. Claremont. You. Calmont. So, Daryl, you can't yeah, really get so a great cool. view back there. Like, you hear a stateroom yeah. kind of, like, stumbling and clanking and making all manner of noise. Um, What's happening? But... Rhaegar and Pitch, like you're you're kind of like slowly walking forward towards Calmont. Uh detect magic fucking radar is is feeling out for anything. Yeah, yeah. And you see like a ping and right near like where his upside down right hand is, uh floating just a little bit of ways away is like some ornate looking like large wide bracelet that has like this dome on top uh and you see like needles swirling on multi axes inside it's like some sort of advanced navigator's compass and it's uh emanating some magic energy but the thing that catches your eye more than that as you both kind of walk forward you pitch arguably a little bit closer more drawn to the magic ping the thing that catches your eye the most is a glistening moist like force field Moist? just ever so Shit. slightly undulating in front of you all and you stop and catch your fucking breath for a moment because standing in front of you is um a gelatinous cube whoa oh wait is is halfling in the middle of that the halfling is Definitely in the middle of that. Oh, fuck, he's dead. <laughs> I mean, if he's it, alive, he's not looking great. Look at that picture. His bones. Um, <laughs> I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, oh no. That oh, seems no. bad. Oh, let Is me, this let a me, uh, stealth initiative? Uh, yeah, actually, um, and actually, if people want to use the stealth check that they rolled when they came in the room, uh, that is perfectly valid in my mind. Okay, I had a 23 stealth. Do you need me oh. to re-roll? No, no, I'll fix it. Uh... I don't... I... Oh, yes. What was yours, Rhaegar? Oh, I didn't do a stealth check. You can just take mine. Okay. Mine's... Uh garbage whatever this is 14 and <laughs> uh, it's really hard to see both i'm just gonna we're just gonna put calma up there he's in all intents and purposes inside it um mm. so you have definitely spotted this thing before it caught sense of you. This will be, this is not guidance. This is just a fair reminder while we learn the mechanics. Um, you technically, especially with the initiatives, and because it's a gelatinous cube and very large, don't have to technically stay in a fight. Fleeing is an option. Not saying you should or need to. But. There are 
always options. Lots of options out there. Um, Pitch, what are you doing? I want to recall knowledge about, I don't know anything about gelatinous cubes. And so I want to see if I can remember what makes them up. Why is Kalma inside this particular one? Is he dead? Do we need to try to kill this? Is it dangerous to be inside it? Are we all going to die in a second? Oh, yeah. What um, is it allergic to? Oh, you can do recall knowledge based on Arcana. Okay. I'm going to do that. Uh, Arcana. Fuck. Wow. Just barely. Um, they tend to engulf uh, prey, organic creatures, typically, uh, and paralyze them with some sort of paralysis agent and begin to dissolve them with weak acid. Uh, it can take a really long time before that acid actually kills you. Um, and you're pretty sure that you may be able to recall more, but you'd have to spend more time on it. And, and essentially, a 13's only going to get you so far. But recall knowledge is a thing that you can try repeatedly uh, in combat. Can I try it in the same round, or is that bad form? I don't, I don't know if it is. Um, I think once per round is a good house rule, no matter what the written rules are okay okay all right um so i one action point i am going to go here <laughs> and uh -huh. as i turn around and move backwards i'm going to shoot it with the mini crossbow that i have at my ready at all times now because this world is hard um i'm gonna shoot it all right because I have no idea. Uh, you're, it's it's like hitting the broadside of a gelatinous barn. I mean, you just shoot at a fucking huge jello wall, and you connect quite easily. Um, six damage. Okay, let me just check one thing. As you try to gauge whether your bolt had any effect, so too do I. Um, <laughs> uh huh. Good to know, good to know. What are they weak to? I have no idea. That would be a recall knowledge check, I think. Um, it You feel like it displaced and hurt a very small portion of it. <laughs> I don't know that... But I mean, bolt size compared to the size of what you're gauging this thing is, it's not bad. You know, it's really not that bad. Uh, Equivalent maybe. exchange and such. All right. Uh, I think that's my entire. Uh, I'm gonna go there from my movement, and then uh, I think I'm done. Okay, so it was a recall knowledge, a shot, and then a move back. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Daryl. Recall knowledge, Arcana. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, What's it weak to? You believe. Um. You're not sure what it's weak to, but you are pretty confident that electric damage uh, would not be wise against this thing. Oh, shit. Uh, or <laughs> acid damage. Oh. You feel like it's probably got strong resistances to both. Okay, okay. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna then I'm gonna pull off my bandolier acid fl or sorry alchemist fire <laughs> and throw it. <laughs> Uh, make yeah. an attack roll. Uh, easy. You just throw it at the fucking jello wall. Yeah. Okay. Takes <laughs> five points of damage. Is it also one splashing damage from that? Uh, it, yes. Yeah. And oh, one persistent, persistent fire. Ooh. And one splash. Okay. So I think it's... Uh, and one piece of fire damage even one. So I think it would take the one splash right now, and then starting next round, it would just tick one off every round. Cool, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a good symbol for that status. There's 
really not, but we'll, you can remember to pick that off every round. Start of its turn. So grabbing and throwing a bomb, that's two actions. What else are you doing? You got one action point left, Daryl. Oh, no, it's that's it, right? Because it's like grab oh. a bomb, throw it, right? Like pulling it off my bandolier is... Um... That's one action. And then throwing, and then throwing it is an... Yeah, and then recall knowledge is the third action. Oh, that's right. Sorry, recall knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rhaegar? See? What are you doing? Oh, God, I don't even know. I am... <laughs> don't because bite it. Don't fight it, you said? No, uh, don't bite it. Don't use your teeth. <laughs> I uh, ready my morning star because I didn't have that ready. Okay. Around so that's one action. Yep. And then um, I love the fucking brothers. Where's the first one? Let's start there. Then next time I'm gonna hold my uh, I'm gonna hold an action. What's that? I want. Sorry, I don't want to hold an action. I want to trigger Set an action. Trigger. Set a trigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So reading it, it costs two action points. So that would be your last two points, and then you need just to define what the trigger is. And before the start of your next turn, you can consume your reaction to activate the trigger if something satisfies it. Yeah. Yeah. If if this thing moves forward, I'm I'm gonna take a whack at it with this morning okay. star. Okay. Trigger set. Um, Alex Stagram had nothing prepared, um, so he spends an interact action point getting his sword out in one hand and then moves up alongside you with another action point and grips the sword in two hands and says, are we holding the line? What do we even look? And he starts to like kind of try to see what you're all seeing. He's seeing like <laughs> the occasional dance of alchemist fire uh, uh -huh. outlining the form. It's like, oh my god! And he just you see him clench both hands on the blade. Um, Should we run? Claremont's in there. Oh, it takes one damage of fire. Oh, yep. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it consumes both of you. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> How do you fight Jello? Um. So. <laughs> I don't know. I've you never see fought one the of these wall ever. Wall of Jello begin to like undulate and shuffle forward uh if you'd like to consume your action Rhaegar, you may but it looks like it's just shuffling with calmont jiggling in the center towards both you and alec Calmont. oh yeah i'm swinging um so it gets about here he's probably gonna kill me but you know what fucking valiant effort ah! <laughs> uh you uh. connect Oh, quite easily. That's great. Okay. Scooping, scraping uh, Jello off as you swipe across. Uh, roll damage for me. Okay. Eleven points of damage. Uh, you sh smack a good chunk of that shit off, and it just plops and separates on the ground, splatting as you'd expect it to. Um, now, it does not stop. The wall of jello from its engulfing forward momentum. Uh, I'm just going to put it into the chat because we're learning and let's see what the hell this thing does. Um, oh, so much things. So much things. Oh, so it, no. So it, oh, it does no. an engulfing action, which is a two action point cost oh. to move twice its move speed, which is up to makes it up to 30 feet. Um, <laughs> so are we all in it? <laughs> oh my god! It would it would get the three of you. Ah! Mitten, stay back. I'm just gonna leave it on the side, but know that it's kind of hitting the. Oh. Actually, actually, Mittens is in there too. Um, the breath. I start suffocating. Um. DC nine. 
18. Uh, bah, 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 bah. It says it. I mean, it should be a reflex saving throw, I would think. DC 19. Yeah. Oh, yeah, reflex save with the list of DC. All right, so I need everyone to make a reflex saving throw. Oh. Fitty, do I get advantage? Okay. I don't. I don't think so. And you all burned your hero points with the <laughs> stones. Uh, we did. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, fuck no. off! Fuck no. you, Thomas no. the bitch. <laughs> I forgot how you said to get that. I want that. Not a river. Uh, it's, it's game settings. Is it? Uh, okay. Um, hold on. Oh boy. Oh yeah, yeah. Dice are nice. Dice are nice. My dice settings. Special effects. And then dice type D twenty on result one animation Thormund T T E. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're dead. Uh, Daryl. <laughs> heads up. <laughs> Seven up. Uh, uh, uh. Just do it, man. Do it. Yeah, yeah. We're doing it. Rip it. Grip it and rip it. Ooh. <laughs> You take 16 points of acid damage on a 4d6 double damage for the crit fail. Um, and you need to also make a save against paralysis. Uh, I need you to make a fortitude saving throw. <laughs> you just fucking barely okay. feel your muscles relaxed beyond your control um, <laughs> and you are floating staring at what you believe is still a barely alive Palmont on his in his last moments but he looks weakened to like almost like an emaciated form of him what his former self might have been um Rhaegar uh, <sighs> Second, you dodge out of the way, yeah, um, and break. You, you kind of slip past and manage to kick that door open and just get in the door frame as this thing undulates forward. Um, Alec, uh, is also enveloped by the thing, um, and takes two points of acid damage. He's engulfed by it uh, and is also trying to resist the paralysis and rolls a natural one and is very much paralyzed and just as near death <laughs> as Calmont. Uh, so you're floating upside down. You're floating sideways. Calmont's in there still traveling along for the ride. Does Mittens have a uh, reflex saving throw? I mean, yeah, he's got to. Should, you should roll for it. Wait, I thought he was out. Mittens oh, was no, out no. of the... Mm -mm. These, these four squares were uh, all engulfed, including the Mittens. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, fuck. Mittens has, like, two health, two health right, or something. Oh, my God. Yeah, Mittens, mittens has <laughs> no health. Mittens is unconscious and floating inside... The gelatinous cube. I would say Minz is completely dead, actually. Just I'll just have to remake yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> still very much floating inside there. Um, <laughs> Save its parts. Oh, gosh. And... That's bad. That's oh, my bad. God, gelatinous cube. <laughs> Remember yeah, when Finny was um... like, you could run. Not saying you have to. <laughs> well, it's barely injured. We're good. 
Yeah, it's yeah. true. Um, let's see. Golf creature. Barely. Well, we're barely injured, but Kalma and Alec are dead. <laughs> oh, so uh, both uh, Daryl, both you and Alec like feel like you're under thick water right now. So you you basically have to hold your breath, mm-hmm. uh, and you will start to mm. suffocate the longer you stay inside this thing. But you you definitely on the start of each round feel like you could try to escape or force your way out or, or come up with all manner of other crazy ideas. Um, I believe if you're not able to escape, you take you take that acid damage at the start of each round. I'm just double checking real quick. Sorry. Um, push Grabbed, slowed one has to hold its breath to start suffocating. Uh, okay. It doesn't say you take that damage um, every round. Sorry. The acid damage of being inside a gelatinous cube? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're just paralyzed inside there until you suffocate to death. Whoa. That's better than taking acid damage every round. Yeah. Is it considered being underwater? Like the submerge or just because of suffocation? What is it considered? I mean, it, it's similar to that, yeah. But yeah, you're it's not it's not technically water. Okay. Um yeah, I'm just double checking this. Yeah, okay. Um how long can most people hold their breath? Like a minute? It's isn't it based <laughs> off of your constitution modifier? It's like uh you have a base of oh, yeah. I don't remember what it is. And then your constitution gives you plus however many minutes yeah. to it or something. Well, either way, come on. Like, <laughs> he doesn't look good. Um, that's the end of round one. We can pause here or muscle through. Up to you guys. I know it's getting a little late. I'm ready to muscle. I know I'm tired. Yeah, muscle. I'm, I'm ready. Pitch. Fuck yeah. Pitch. Um, pitch panics and... Um, before him, he just uh, and this uh, flaming sphere erupts directly in front of him and starts burning away. At mm. the yes. Mm. I mean, no, no, that's the same. Oh, uh, why do I? Why does it? Oh, no, no. roll damage. That's that's bad. Yeah, he failed. Oh, he, he failed. failed. Oh, thank fuck. Yes. Nice. Uh, you see bits of jello kind of like melt off the I want, perimeter, the exterior. I want to try to burn um, at least Daryl towards Daryl and Alan to free them. <laughs> okay. Not not on them, but to cut away yeah. <laughs> like a section of it. And then um, Pitch fucking runs through this door if he can get through the door. You could, yeah. Like. I want to be able to still see things, but I want to be far. Like, I don't know if it can fit yeah. through the door, but I want to be far enough away to where. Yeah. Okay. Like here. Yeah, that's fine. That's spot works. Um, all right. You do those things. All right. Um, I'm done. Your sphere. Is that a maintained thing? Oh, yes, it is. And yeah, right. Okay. Forever. Uh, Daryl, you feel the grip the suction around you kind of separate for a moment Ooh. um as as bits of that side of the cube begin to, to melt away briefly um you feel like escaping this thing would be a little bit easier than before pitch's flaming sphere made its grand entrance what do you want to do though? Mm. uh Okay. Hmm. Shit. Can I grab uh, Carmont? Mm. Hey, Bailey. Is he you like within reach? Try. He is within reach, but you know, you definitely feel like it's a struggle, like to even move your own body out of the mm-hmm. engulfed thing that's swallowing you right now and you're 
not able to breathe. Um, yeah, so I would put what? I would put Daryl into that mindset of what's happening right now. Um, so you could you could definitely reach for Calmont and try to grab him, but it would take a lot of your energy to do so. And you're not so sure he's alive, but that's a that's, that's a check you could make if you wanted to try to gauge that. So if it's loose enough, I want to grab uh, one of my elixirs of life that's on my bandolier, and then I'm gonna shove my arm <laughs> through the. Oh wait, yep, shove my arm through the gelatinous gelatinous thing all the way to his mouth. Let's see if I can like force feed him or if, if i can grab him and then force feed him uh elixir of life okay so I'd like to try to do um it. i'd like you to make the equivalent of an escape check to yeah even maneuver your body through this yeah. thing it's a reflex save or like what athletics uh let's see what are you thinking to check using typically athletics <laughs> you see the creature <laughs> Uh, uh, you can attempt an acrobatics or athletics check, which I, I'm good with either of those. Oh my god. Oh, fuck you! Oh, fuck oh, you! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Two natural ones in a row. That's all. He, he's like, he gets his arm stuck in his bandolier. He's like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Like the looteness <laughs> that you felt. Like you tried to go back <laughs> against the grain, against this, the the melting uh, avalanche of Jello. You tried to turn back against it in order to help Calmont, and you paid the price for it. Um, <laughs> you you just lost a round of breathable air in your attempt oh. to help Calmont. Like you, <clears throat> you know, sucked in like a bit of the thing. It burned a little bit. And more importantly, you felt more air escape you as you refilled your mouth hole. Um, you can technically still make an escape check. I'd give you one more action point out of that. Really? Okay. All yeah, right. I think Pathfinder is brutal enough that like I'm not going to do ridiculous <laughs> nat one punishments like the the absolute fail and some other side effects from the action are enough. I, I think you should still keep your action point in most cases. We'll see. Okay. All right. So athletics check on myself. Still have one more action point. Uh, yeah. To I see mean, if well, I can if, recover. Ac acrobatics yeah. or athletics if you want to try to just purely escape. Um, Fuck. And with pitches, flame, reducing the DC, you are able to just fucking barely... Like, oh shit! Really? Oh your way my out of god! This, this rhino's <laughs> asshole. Like, <laughs> out and like Blah. just surrounded by like jello and blubber and liquid oh. burning little acid pools that I resulted tried. from some of it mixing with the fire. Uh, you are curled up and prone on the ground. Let's uh -huh. say it's still a little bit of that natural one carrying over, but you are oh, out god. of the cube for now. You look up and you see what you think is probably a dead Calmont and an almost dead, suffocating Alec floating inside the thing. And, and of course, the body is on the Uh Rhaegar, you've snuck yeah, past it. You're buddy. bracing in the kicked open door frame. What are you doing? Yeah. I, oh, all this hey, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There's something else you need to know? No, no, I, I was trying to remember if I did the minus one burning damage on it last time, and I did. It's, it hasn't gone yet this time. Sorry about that. Almost instinctually, without thinking, Rhaegar runs right at it, just angry. And as he runs, um, his body begins to shift, and he goes into animal form. And as he jumps, he tra he jumps head first into it and transforms into a shark, jaws open, trying to lodge itself. In the middle of it, just eat its way fucking through from one side to the other. So I, yeah, because I'm I, like I didn't even I don't even have control of myself now. I love that. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to spend one action point like just charging and let's say like mid leap. Uh, and, you know, no checks really required. Again, it's a giant wall of, like, fucking mobile jello aquarium. You shift and transform into yeah. a shark. Um, 
let's say you just start to punch through because I think transforming is going to consume the last of your action points at the start of your next turn. I think you could make uh, an attack roll. Right? Let me just double check the shark abilities. Oh yeah, it's two one. Yeah, makes sense. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but it's so worth it. I gotta be able to get into him, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what if? Yeah. Okay. Would I do like an athletics check to get in him, or what am I doing to get in him? I How does it? Uh, I think you. No. Yeah, yeah. You just. You just go. Uh, it'll be a part of the. We'll see how good the attack roll is. Whether you, like, you penetrate. Because of my awesomeness, can I get like some sort of like uh, bonus? To, I mean, he's gonna damage try to damage the shit out of me, but I feel like I oh, yeah. took him by some surprise here. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. no. I mean, in all honesty, I think everyone's valiant attempt at fighting this thing has uh, inspired heroism in my bones. So you know, I think everyone can <laughs> have a hero point. Uh, also, one more thing. Yeah. While I'm in him, uh, <laughs> while I'm in it, uh, I also uh, use Titan Wrestler. So he, I am now grappling him, so he cannot move this round. This is a passive. Well, it's a passive that allows you to grapple something extra large. Um, yeah. So I think... For the sake of the narrative, you've you've charged it, leapt into the air, shifted into a shark, and like just started to punch into like the outer rear membrane of this thing, and that's where like your six second slice of time is going to slow down because that's all three action points right there. Uh, but you know you, you you've set some things up. Uh, Alec is struggling and squirming trying to fight the paralysis um he needs to make another fortitude saving throw um one second uh he does not um the cube Let's see. Hmm. Well, how does this work? Hold on a second. Yeah, I mean, like the the cube bait. You see it almost like, you know, any sci-fi movie where, like, the weird liquidy wall, like, forms into abstract shapes. Does so and tries to smack at the incoming Ooh. shark creature. Um, pretty sure that connects. And you do have five temporary hit points with your new transformation. And so you only have one of those left. Uh, I'm just going to put you on the outskirts just so I can see you here. Um, temporary hit points down to one. Just doing that top left of your sheet. Um, it tries to like almost combo with another bit of itself and smack you again at reduced penalty. It misses and stupidly it just tries to finish off and rolls a natural one. Um, Calmont, we can just remove from the initiative queue for now, but we're back to pitch. All right, I maintain my my spell, and I want to burn in closer to Alec to try to free him further. So that's with okay. Flaming Sphere. I'm using the, um, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, the maintain main, yeah, the spell. maintain spell action. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it fails again. If you want to roll damage, Ooh, can I use my uh, hero point and yep. re-roll damage? Yep. You oh know. man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh damn! It's like double. Uh, the thing kind of shirks a little bit closer oh, to the on. northern wall, and you see Alex still inside of it. 
but appears like parts of his arm and leg are like protruding out where where hunks of jello have melted off. Okay, I'm also going to cast because uh, that's one action point to use that. I'm going to use magic okay. missile and automatically hit it with two of them, the two remaining ones that I have. Height um, is this regular? This is just first level. Uh, okay. I don't have any more second level. Yeah. So right. I'm going to hit it twice with the goal. The whole goal of, of this is I'm aiming them directly at um, Alex, Alex area to try okay. to like free yeah. him from the the damage. The magic there. missiles are like homing missiles. Uh, so that's nice. one. And then Ooh, okay, eight more damage. My goodness. Um, yeah, you know, Alec is basically like like draping down the side now, like only from the knees in is he still hanging in there and attached. Okay. Uh, his ability to escape uh, and arguably reduce the effects of the paralysis seems to uh, be lessening. Okay. Your every carve. Daryl, uh, you're still inside as well, aren't you? No, Daryl. No, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, puking yeah, sorry. on the ground. Yeah, you're you're on the ground. Ace Venturing. Okay. Uh, you're on the ground <laughs> prone right now. Uh huh. Uh. What are you doing? Can I? Is Alec out or is he still stuck in? You see him dangling from yeah his oh, his yeah below. I, I reach up. I reach up and try to pull him out. Okay. Make an athletics check. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, oh, yeah. You just. <sighs> you feel the suction like kind of pull and pop and fart a little bit as he releases and like his his very lifeless uh numb body like limply drags out but you know he's clearly conscious his eyes are, are moving a little bit um, medicine check see if i can stabilize him or help him some you're pretty sure that if you pull him to the side, which you can still do based on your athletics check, um, and just give yes. him a moment for the paralysis, it should fade. So if you want to like push him to okay. the, towards the door or yeah, the I corner, do that. Your prerogative in the corner. Corner. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Get in there, Alex. You get get in there. You do you do that, um, and I'm gonna assume you spend an action point to stand up from prone to do the pull out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it okay. was like yeah. So then with the stand up, check that pull, down and then me, down. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rhaegar. Oh, did that thing take a point of damage for burning? It does. Uh, oh, it did not last round. Sorry. Yep, it didn't. Hey, Thank one. You. Uh, Rhaegar, uh, you are up. Yeah, I just finished what I was doing, which is shark going to tight and rapid. So, here's the benefit I will give you. Um, if you would like to make an athletics or acrobatics check, yep. Um, you may do that paired before the attack roll and if the acrobatics athletics check with a slightly easier dc now that half of this thing's melted away you can plunge through him and come out another side without taking that 2d6 acid damage that you would have taken had it merged on you okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay so doing it oh hit me with that using my hero point that we just got okay All right. oh. Thank you, God. Blowing those dice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you punch through this thing with ease. Uh, roll me some, some biting, chomping action. Be melee? Uh, yeah, so I think your transformation... Let me just pull you back up again. Uh, it's going to take me a while to learn this, but I think you essentially make an unarmed strike to hit, That's right? Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, doing then, a bite. and then you roll the damage from that creature's bite. Yeah. Bring uh, it. So. Oh my Christ! You 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 chew chunks of it as you Wait. fly from one side to the other with ease. Go the ahead point. and roll two d eight oh. piercing damage. Yeah, you just, just roll two d eight in chat. To are you the D8? You're the D8. Uh, not plus one. Okay, two D8. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Well, I imagine you have to go one side to another. You come flopping out the other side. Well, could I, still can I bite point? twice while moving? Yeah, I would imagine I would. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so you had, you had two, you had bite. two actions. Yeah, you so yeah, As multiple bite. attack penalty. One more unarmed yep. strike yep. So for the bite. Second strike. bite. 
Uh, you just barely oh. get one last mouthful for 2d8 oh more God. damage. Oh <laughs> lucky the day. DC AC is really low. It's like exactly 10. Uh, and you take nine more points of gelatinous jello nice. cubes to go. Uh, now are you... Yeah. yeah. I, um, I assume I, I come out and I, I transfer back into my my form. <laughs> yeah, re release is a free action. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm going to e easy mode it and just drop a new you right there. It's, it's, a new me. Oh. Oh wait, change the thing, huh? Okay, hold on. Um, there you go. Update. Oh, I think I actually had a shark icon somewhere. Fuck. I don't know if I yeah. ever sent it to you. I guess I guess set some of those up. Um. Oh shit, I forgot to put you back in. Hold on, sorry. That's the problem with doing it that way. And update. To let's just say fifteen. Um, Alec come to prone near death. Uh, slowly stands up with an action point, no longer paralyzed. Uh, I suppose his hand would have kind of been like rigor mortis, almost into his grip. So he he still has it one handed. Um, he sees this thing melting and shriveling and with some semblance of honor or stupidity um steps forward adjacent to daryl i think we said stood up uh -huh. and he swings at this thing once and connects mm. Oh, mm -hmm. 11 points of damage and the good. gelatinous cube is like a small little puddle but it is still undulating and moving and alive um is calmont has calmont been released he has he does not oh. look well okay uh, let's try this Oh, he actually gets smaller. Fuck yeah. Um, that's it for Alec. Oops. Uh, you see the cube leaving pretty much all of its contents behind. Starts slowly, much more slowly, trying to undulate away. Um, Pitch, what are you doing? I follow it with my burning sphere, and I burn the last yes. of it. To, sh to sh dust shreds it just screeches as it dies uh that's this yeah it you do all of that and it, it just leaves little burning pools of, of jello slowly dissolving into acid along the stone sizzling in place uh everyone feeling real tingly inside and out wow i, I rush over to um yeah. uh, calmont and just force feed him a, a healing potion elixir of life all right uh throw it in the chat there I keep the sphere burning for a minute, Fiddy, and I just like move it back and forth over the jello, and you just hear <laughs> this like tiny screams. You know, I imagine the screams from the thing. You know, when the yeah. blood's like. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Um, so you you have to basically pour this thing down Calmon's oh, yeah. lifeless face, um, and. You think uh. for a moment that he is is taking it well. He's gulping it down, um, but then you see like it's like little pockets of acid and gas kind of belching out of his mouth, and the elixir just sort of dribbles out the corner <gasps> of his mouth, and the head slumps to the side. Fitty, no. I want to. I, I I run up. I want to help, and <laughs> I I I want to try to pull the um whatever kind of moisture and shit that's in his lungs i want to try to like i put my hand over his mouth and i want to try to actually pull 
Ooh. The, the oh, gunk oh. with my, you know, maybe with. Oh, try that too. I see some, what Pitch is doing, and I'm like, we both have the power of mo moisture. Moist. We gotta do it. <laughs> the power the of power is combined. Let's see. Um, Let's see if we can. We have to remove the, the acid, and the goo. You could. You could, you could Where's it with that, Rigor? I was, I was just saying, I clear a table for them to set him on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You clear, you clear one of these work tables off. Um, you you slump Kalmont's small body up on the table, and the two of you focus something fierce. Um, I'd like you both to just make naked d twenties. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it doesn't get much. Oh! Naked. Let's go. Mm, so right. naked. You, you, uh, yeah, you, you embrace the naked. Um, you feel a strong, you feel Darryl, a strong pull your connection. You just call me in here. You, you feel a strong connection with, uh, with both your stone and its, its energy flowing through you. And there's like this moment where Kalmont's like very blue, gaunt lips like everything's just kind of sucked in on his face but like for a moment there the dryness disappears as if freshly moistened by some unseen force and there's like a little like strange latent like relief of sound and gas from Calmount's mouth as like some of this like jello begins to like it, pull oh, out of the side it of help. My, mouth. My I rushed goal, to, rush to him I can do something yeah, my goal is to make him cough, Hold on. It, to like, to like, get it out of his lungs and Jesus. get it, you know, remove the toxins. Is this help? Does this help? Like, he's near dying, near death, right? Yeah. Um. One second. And I and I, I hope if if it's something I can do, I want I have I have color to throw on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, let, me, let me hear. Let me hear about that color. Okay. Um, I put my hands over his chest, although it's metal. It's metal, like ah, the uh, the uh, anathema from just touching the metal. I I take his. I have to take his armor off first, and I place my hands on uh, his his undergarments underneath. And uh, as my hands touch his chest, you hear the ooh, the shit, and a glow happens, and you see that glow come up through his his uh, throat canals and I try to expungiate all the shit yeah. in, his, in his system. Com combined effort here of what I'm doing yes. as well was literally like pushing like like moisture into his lungs to make him cough out all of the I toxins was, as well. I was inspired by his by by pitch our powers well. our powers combined. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a it's a beautiful synergetic moment and there's like bits of acid and bile being sort of regurgitated up from Calma. He's not like throwing it up, but it's almost like every now and again, there's like a gasp of air and a cough and like bits of stringy slime kind of leave acidic burning trails around the corners of his mouth. And eventually through minutes and minutes of this three tiered three man operation, Calmont, seems to do exactly that to stabilize a little bit where assuredly he should have been dead you manage to bring him back from the brink um something you feel a little bit of an affinity to Rhaegar. um and calmont looks at you all gaunt is all hell like a, a former image of what you imagine he looked like like not even close to that in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, but like almost a skeletal version of that, with like burnt lip and and weird scorch, acidic marks, scarring his face and in other parts of his exposed body. Uh, and his his very dry eyes would be incapable of tears if not for the sudden moistness that seems to be <laughs> enveloping him. And you see his eyes begin to, to water, and you hear a rasping sound of like. 
And you see inside his mouth that his tongue is like not there anymore. And it's pretty clear after a few sad attempts that seem to be making him more and more upset, he's realizing that he can't express his gratitude because he can no longer speak. Oh, shit. He looks around the room, feels around his wrist, and you can tell even in this pretty grim and dark moment that he's looking for something missing. And he sees down the floor near one of like the burnt pools of acid his big, wide, magic navigator bracelet. And he looks at you all like a little conspicuously and kind of judging your character and, and what you're all about. And he looks over at the floor over there sitting up on the operating table and he kind of gestures towards it like pleading like, Yeah, we we head over with him, letting him guide us to wherever he's trying to go, helping him as as Eventually he leaves. Kind of I have one up. more. If yeah. this helps him move quicker, I use this for the whole room. So the three. Yeah. Oh yeah. For everybody. Okay. That's my last. So you, triple action point. Triple action situation. Point. Yep. AOE. Uh, okay. Uh, well, why don't you? I feel like this, because it's a healing pulse, is like a single roll generated by you, uh, the yep. healer. Okay, so roll on. Just as a roll. Oh, uh, yeah, you can just click that healing button and then roll that D8. Oh, you're okay. welcome, it's, guys. It's something. Well, uh, two, to that you. Two. Oh. two to you. I'm clicking Sorry. everyone. Oh, okay. You. You're welcome, everyone. Come on, it's not, no longer at zero. Or one. He's yeah, at three, probably. One. He's at three, yeah. You're right. Uh, and with that, he kind of sits up with a little bit of life in the eyes, but he is sitting and wheezing and making unintelligible, raspy sounds. Alec kind of looks at everyone a little bit, just, just exhausted. And he, he says to you all this. We should probably get our bearings and work on an exit strategy. It was hell of quite a library. And my grandfather's keep, but we haven't found it yet. Oh, I might know where that is. To the north of here. Did we find your ring, by the way? I don't remember. I don't think we we did not actually. Yeah. Um, we should Might go look. Why he's so keen on the library? Angle. Like you've you've helped us find Calmont here. I feel like we should rest at the very least, and then go find your ring, and then we can get out of here. I would very much appreciate that. And he gives you like a stand, like a little bend at the neck kind of nod. Hmm. Um, should we uh, adjourn? Hang off, hang off a cliff right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Damn. Sorry, I missed that last part. But did Calmont wake up? He did. Yeah. With the the healing aura, he's 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 awake, but he is unable to speak. Ever oh. again, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Got, like acid mark, like where there once was a tongue, there is not. Ooh. He was in that thing for a long time, almost to the point of fear suffocation and acid damage. Layer. Well, so upon. he's probably like. He probably looks like a burn victim, right? Like his his flesh yeah. is kind of like featureless and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Now. Yeah, like like I mean, I think it's still intact, but there's probably like you know missing like pockmarked chunks of flesh and like <sighs> when like the goo oh. was sort of pulling out and like gelatinous strings, it was like leaving burn marks around the mouth and yeah, just super gaunt and emaciated. Yeah. Not great looking. <laughs> um, and you uh you pick up his uh 
this navigator's bracelet. Um, and you all begin to make plans to get your bearings and catch your breath for a moment before working your way out of here and or helping Alec. So we'll pick up there next time. Oh. <sighs> awesome. That's awesome. I'm excited to oh see our new God. powers. <laughs> Mittens. I'm going to send you names of new abilities that I want. Yeah, I think, um, you know, again, all that stuff is, is definitely open to creative interpretation and pursuit, uh, meaning you can try to channel and, and manipulate that that newfound connection and energy in ways that you'd like. There might be some things that are, I'll just be like, you know, go fuck yourself. I love you, but go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, but we'll have, a com- we'll have a conversation about it. And I mean, even wild stuff, I think, should remain in play and we'll try to find appropriate mechanics for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just awesome. know, Fitty. Bear in mind, they're meant to scale to you like to final level in their own very own branching pathing way. So try to think about it like that. Like, Don't try to be too greedy. Great to have pie in the sky ideas. And think about it like branching, right? Like if you want to start doing one thing, a very advanced, evolved, combo, multiple version of that thing might be something that you unlock by continuing down certain pathways within that concept. You're asking us to create and balance our own uh, class, <laughs> which I love. So I've yeah. got about 50 ideas. So I'm just going to yeah, shoot them all your way. I didn't want to like template or blueprint out like every fucking thing I wanted to be. Because I think, no, it, I think it also narratively makes sense for you. Like, you know, whatever you try to do with this thing should be unique and somewhat bespoke. But yeah. Um, cool. Just out of curiosity. Approximately, how much experience do you think you would get for killing a giant gelatinous cube? Just approximately like, um, six thousand. Level four. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. I was just wondering. Oh, we, we got away, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I am just curious. Approximately, I, like it, um, it's surprisingly. I don't know a standalone gelatinous cube is yeah. not that much more challenging in terms of like raw math than a DD or a Captain Fizzleclaw, Cinderclaw, okay. whatever. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't even sure what to expect for something like that, you know? Yeah. I've never fought a gelatinous cube before. I've, I've never excited. handled one before. I always wanted to. We did, we did it. it guys. I, really, I really, I really like the, the idea. Well, like out, out of character backstory, uh, the underlying theme was that the cinder claws, when they tried to fight the goblins upstairs for control of the keep, uh, lost control of their tropical land dragon that they brought with them. Uh, and Didi was really upset by losing his pet dragon that he was trying to tame and then tried to tame and corner uh, the crazy bear that the goblins themselves were trying to draw out of the wilderness. And that went really bad really bad and yeah uh, the cinder claw pirate crewmen were left to just fucking deal with it and they just barricaded it in um and then he was his next goal was to try to feed things uh to the gelatinous cube to, to quote unquote tame it uh and since calmont wasn't getting anywhere for the captain they fed him to the thing and then locked the door wow. that's how that happened <laughs> gosh hey it's always fun to have a little backstory, you know? Oh, it's not much fun. Dude, that reminds me of the game Oberdin, uh, Return to Oberdin. Like, oh, I back played it. Piece it all together. It's, who would have thought that the oh, yeah. uh, idea... Wait, wait, don't sweat. But don't, don't sweat. Yeah, yeah don't yeah, tell yeah, I'm, 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 still, I'm definitely play still planning on playing that soon. Okay. The game is your, your claim suggester in the 18, 1800s first ship that <laughs> went weird. Wild. That's it. That's wild. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. Mm-hmm. I started it. I just haven't gotten gotten through it yet. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, yeah. All right, dude.